other 35. Cool. It started. Welcome to Open Minds, Open Mic, the place to be on a Friday night. We have a special delight for you. Nick Paleologos is going to do a feature set. Um, we just got to sing happy birthday to the Megas himself. Uh, I'm going to start off the show with uh, a little collab that Daniel and I have been working on and plotting. It just so happens lined up when it was ready for um, a special person's birthday. So I'm just going to go ahead and share screen to see if we can get this thing going. Can y'all see Daniel over there with his? Yeah, we can see your screen and we can see All right, Daniel so... right there. Yeah, we see him. I called it, let's make a poem. Yo, Thomas, I have a beast ass idea I want to throw at you. Let's make a poem for Gustav and increase the stanzas by two. Take turns and bust a rhyme as we follow through. I would like to write it down, though I don't know about you. Yeah, I feel what you mean, man. You know, you could write it down and all, but uh, I feel like that freestyle is my art. I'm holding it close like I got the all spark. Transform on these hoes. Make his art done, enlighten my flows And now I wanna write something about him too But I wanna do it on the one, two freestyle from the dome Yo, cause he stays in my home, bro On the regular, not in physical incarnation But in spirit, this man's across the nation You hear it every time he spits this fucking proclamation He's the dopest, the fucking Magus, the most amazing I can try to freestyle but just can't for some reason Lost the skill and blame it on the demons Take a pause because I feel that I'm done Dealing my issues like forest and run Don't ever run run from yourself Keep the mind fluid always in hell top of the game Just aim your mind to what you want to achieve and run the game It's just a track and as a matter of fact you overlap some of these whack ass rappers that write shit down. Go ahead and bust a freestyle. Do it for Magus. The words are there, but my mouth won't listen. Just silent, like an embarrassed musician. Remember the dream so that it keeps me driven. Pushing through the waves of recognition. Don't push through the waves, man. Just cut through it. Do it like you influenced by God and let God do it. You ain't got to do much except for spit the fluid ass lyrics that you can do. Remember, it's not about you, it's about Magus, the man that put our brain in stages of different levels of discussion until we figured out the button to press to make this whole thing nothing but a good dream for everyone on every plane of existence. Magus, your brain is so ever expanding, it's like there's no resistance. Gustav is poetry, a master of lines if you listen closely. Experiment with the sentences because of the poetic need. Feed the greed on what perfection reads. But pay no mind to what the reflection reads. Yeah, he got the time and he got the rhymes. But when you really look at his soul, he got the love and the mind to change this world. Gustav, you're so inspirational that I think you done changed my girl. My wife's been different since she met, met you. I've been different since I met you. I think the whole Open Minds crew too. We all love you. We do this for you. Freestyle off the dome, written down, collab over different time and space just to bring the things together in place for you to be like, damn, these boys don't love me. Fuck yeah, man. Same with open minds. We see you and we love what you do. I can bend the page and twist some words, metaphors that pack a punch, sparkling some verbs, absorb some inspiration from Gustav and Herbs, spread the love because that's what we all deserve. No doubt it's what we deserve, it's why we're all here, it's why we all want to be heard. One by one, we line up, just to spit some rhymes to get us through some times that might not be the best in our mind, but we all still show up and say, yo. What the fuck? Whether you read it down or you spit it straight freestyle out your mouth. Writing it down has been my niche. Freestyle isn't the easiest, but Thomas, you're dope with it. The urge is there like an itch. If only I can turn the skill on like a switch.
Gustav, thank you for all you've done. The magic your words carry makes the atmosphere fun. With fire from every line contains more heat than the sun. Melts in our emotions then leave us stunned when you're done. Gustav, with the energy to join every open mic possible. Beast poetry, with a delivery that's phenomenal. Can be about anything, his poetry is tropical. Painting these images so vivid it's remarkable. A fantastic poet, an even better friend. He supports and respects all till life meets the end. Replies Quick, once a message is sent, send the Zoom link and he'll make the time to attend. Amazing person to collaborate with. Once a poem is finished, there's an explosion of bliss. No sadness in sight. Since they were dismissed, Gustav has a pen that enjoys to hit. I respect you, Gustav, checking in when work becomes stressful. With everything that's been happening, it's hard to feel special. I have regrets that I often wrestle, yet I stay on the sidelines like a bezel. Life is a game, and our ages are levels. Each year it's a test, and it's always mental. Sometimes we feel that we are stuffed in a barrel, taunted by the devil, unable to revel. Just keep moving and push that pedal. Put in the effort as if you're seeking a medal. Don't mind the reasons, because they are several. Do you and entertain us during mayhem like Daryl. Thank you. <laughs> Love you. Loved it! Love you! Yeah! Woo. Loved it! Thank you! That's so fucking good! Birthday gift! Wow, that was my favorite birthday gift! Happy birthday, brother! Happy birthday! Cheers! And that was and happy birthday! <laughs> it had levels to it because it wasn't just a tribute to you. We were like kind of in a discussion, you know, over writing and freestyling. And so he wrote his verses out, and then I was just doing like freestyle kind of responses to it. And I told me, like, oh, perfect. This poem, I'll pay the tribute for us. So, like, I'm so glad that you enjoyed that. I hope everyone enjoyed it. My internet's acting up again. It just got the unstable. So, hopefully, at least you guys got to hear that uninterrupted. But, yeah. Um, yeah, we got to hear it. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks. Yo, let's give it up for Daniel Fernandez. But everything, I was just there to, you know, make it all come true. So, um, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it had to be done. It, it was just a perfect thing to jump in on together. Have uh, one challenge on making one person undecided on whether to actually freestyle or just write it down. And on top of that, to make a, a tribute. You know, it just fell in perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, welcome to the show. Happy birthday, Magus. Um, we started things off pretty. We believe the first they've been here. I think four or five. Um. Tonight we have Nona Lee. So, Nona, if you could unmute yourself and bless us with some words, we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, I didn't quite hear what you said. What did you say? What did you say? Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, Thomas is breaking up. It's you, Nona, on the mic, and we would love it if you would bless us with some words. You're breaking okay. up a little. Okay, I'm going to share screen for mine because it is quite visual. Let's see. All right, I just gave you co-host so you can share screen. Uh -huh. um, I think after sharing that screen, maybe my internet kind of messed up. Am I coming in okay now? Yes, I can hear you clear. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah, so this is um a collage I made to go with it. Crater. I leap off the moon, pinwheel down the star glistened sky, my flesh flares. 
I plummet a star among stars, cracking into a million hairline slivers. I meet the ground with a chasm of what remains. I fragment, saw pearls streak down from cheeks to chin. My eyes blink the cosmos into impressionist puddles. My fists curl till I see the pale white of bone. My nails dig hard, leaving their crescent impressions. I wait for the pain to release me from these scars, hollowing selenic skin as I try to stop shrieking. And I just had that one little poem to share today. And your use of white space is amazing. Tremendous work. Thank you. No, no, that was absolutely fantastic. Loved it. Uh, so cool. Everyone, if you could do me a favor, come yourself. Give them a you guys. Good. All right. I did. I realize people have to get in the list. We have everybody. I want to go ahead and uh, give it up for this next poet. Coming up to see this is why I like to do five and then the feature because if you would have started your feature halfway through the first feature set and we had people showing up so this way we figured it was the best way to get everyone to hear the feature so but yeah we're gonna go ahead and uh move on to our next poet Christy Scribbles I think I'm breaking up but Chris you can what hear up, me. what up, what up, what up, people? You, bless Happy us birthday. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna go. It's good to be here. Love you all. I'm going off screen, but I just want to say okay. This is something I wrote today. Okay, not you video. Okay. <clears throat> here we go. It's um here we go. Sorry. Brain ripples. The space of time sits inside my mind and reminds me back to me. I sit inside this place and wonder. I wonder why we die. We separate from body, from mind, from soul. I am not in control. I am not in control. The mind reminds, the mind rewinds, pulling the tape around the cassette with the pencil to fix the noise. To fix the noise, what is all that noise hidden from the void of the earth at its axis, axis at its core? The middle of earth, the middle of me, the stomach holds the acid of corrosion, 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 explosion, corruption, corruption, disruption. Corporation, corporation, manipulation, manipulation, manipulation. Persuasion of the mind plays back false rewind and allows the sticking of the time ticking in my mind and I break the bottle off of my crystallized brain. Am I going insane? Am I going insane? Am I sane? Am I safe? Am I satisfied, 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 satisfactory with its back to me, scoffing at the ridiculous nature of it all, of the hidden wall buried in roots and scars and textures, textures of roots, of the bumpy, of the lumpy, the wet, the hard, the hand runs down the wall and feels the surface of my mind of the place inside me, 
that one that no one gets to see, that no one wants to see, that no one believes is me, is her, is she. She is me inside the mind of the brain, of the body, of the soul. Ripples control, ripples control the wave of the roll of the time in the space of my mind. Thank you. Ooh, Chrissy, oh. always with that fire. Oh. Everyone unmute and give it up for Christy Scribbles. That was wonderful. Very hypnotic. Yeah. Them ripples in my mind. Yeah, alchemist. Yeah. So dope. I just posted the list there too, just in case I get um disconnected and I miss some of y'all just keep the show going on without me because this ain't about me. Tonight is all about Nick Paleo coming up soon, but first we got the Jedi to himself, the Skiff first. Paul Skiff, if you can unmute yourself and bless us with some words, my brother, we would appreciate it. the list I think with um wait I don't see skiff I maybe skiff disconnected um let me keep skiff on with the star uh the next people we have um Khan and Kaiji I'm hoping skiff is back by then I'll move it to before the feature and add Skiff. So it shows a suspicion on the back Friday. It's kind of difficult. He's easy. He's easy. So we're going to move on first. Um, who I had the privilege to hear at the, the PGM feature uh, book uh, tour, virtual book tour that we hosted here at Open Minds, and shortly became one of my favorite poets. Lacan, if you could bless us with some words, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so excited uh, for your for your set, uh, Nick. <laughs> um, so I have two, um, I have two poems for today. Um, first one's called Illumination. Conjuring the night, rolls from bones to skin, dropping its command to a sky that knows how to bow every day. Slitting the horizon is a motion of a soul, harrowed by the colors of my palette, peeling light with a breath, is a poet's innate curse, letting a letting bleeding of words, pulling the sun, Lower than the dawn, pain is called upon, seeping beyond the sleeping veneer, the field of colors break, crimson, turns to severed nothingness, too bruised by the calligraphy of dusks, summoning the letters rused, perused by the clouds I hold in my mouth. In a bright, still wake, I give a song for the homeless light. It shatters the gaps of God. Gasps remain in the vanta. Spell, spells the unconscious heaven splattered in the even tide of the enchanting. I call even. There. Um, I did that for Finn, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> uh, Finn's a um, second um, poem. Um, it's called Tickers Talked. <clears throat> the screen stares the 1159. A.M. in me, 
as my heart beats marks at a deadline that the universe forced its own hands for me. It's not a mistake. So am I. I'm just taking back what's mine and I'm no longer a tick. Destiny counts under its palm. Fate fools. A test to know if pain is enough to unlearn the empty seconds that I allow to fall on me. Today, I've caught its drop. I'm no longer a plummet. A pawn of sacrifice as a lamb turned to a flame. Like a noon flipped too often. And the threads of blame in my hand collapses as an ash of history. As I close the laptop, the muses smile. For another poet woke up again. I winced the sunlight, opening a book ahead beyond the confines of a machine. It breathes on my gaze, peered on a eureka of breaths. It's a liar. So am I. Maraming salamat. Wow, that was dope, man. I got disconnected from to hear the recording because I got most of it, and that was just amazing. If all y'all could do me a favor, unmute and give it up for Lacan. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Phenomenal. So dope, man. Hey, and it's so good to see you here. Um. I know you on the other side of the world, and so it's hard for you to, you know, make it to all of these. But I, I want to see and hear more. It's not back yet, so I decided his name. Oh, there he is, right there. Hey, uh, pop right when I said that. Um, but um, I'm sure Skiff won't mind going after the future. His name is. Across, across the pond and it's getting pretty we're going to throw name on just in the future but before that make sure y'all if you can unmute yourself and bless us with some words we alright are we doing two pieces or one piece or whatever you want Okay. I want to make it as long as possible before Nick can go to punish him. So, <laughs> all right. Um, this first piece is called Ostrich. It is a common misconception that an ostrich buries its head in the sand to feel invisible, disappearing behind their own peekaboo walls like babies and tired parents. I learned early that being out of sight does not make you out of mind. In fact, most predators do their best work in the dark. <clears throat> Even if you pretend to sleep, put the blanket over your head, the boogeyman still finds places to put his hands. I had wondered if he was blind, the way he turned my body braille made me question the message my body wrote, like maybe too fresh, too grown, too easy target, silly me thinking that being child was a Rosetta Stone, translate all my messages into no. An ostrich buries its eggs in the sand, uses its beak to turn them, help them grow, keep them safe. This appears as burying its head. My mother told me it was bad luck to shut off all the lights of the house. And I wonder if this was her way of sticking her head in the sand, trying to keep me safe. My mother, the bane of my existence reminds me I merely adopted the dark. She was born in it, knows us flightless birds have a way of staying grounded that looks a lot like trying to disappear, spread our wings to find balance. Ostrich are the heaviest living birds, so they are not able to fly. And I worry if the weight of the horror story wrapped around my body will do the same. I no longer try. Instead, I stick my head in the sand and hope I can help 
just one more person grow, keep one person safe. I am not hiding anymore. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat's a little messed up. Um, and there's a second piece. This poem is called, Don't Go Through That Girl's Phone, or Fuck Around and Find Out, or Look at You, Stupid. That's what you get. I've always wanted the type of relationship where we don't lock our phones. See me, I only lock my phone so it doesn't pocket dial, but I will happily give you the passcode. But she places her phone face down. I can feel the rumbling, but not the notification. It's like hearing Paul Revere's horse, but not what he had to say. It does not keep the war away from your doorstep. Today, I built a Trojan horse out of a fake phone call. Pretended, pretended my phone was dead so I could use hers. And it was the message asking what color she should get her nails and the realization she hadn't asked me in months. And the thought of her wrapping them around his dictionaries have a better way of describing this feeling. It is funny, the same nails she used to scratch your back will slice your ego. He said some bright blue would look nice. And I think back to Tuesday when I said I didn't like the color she picked. Thought she was more earth tones and autumn nights because everything about her made me fall. To Jack Lantern, my heart into something so she could call her own. It makes sense he would color her with winter. How lately she's been so cold. How I just read how she's been so blue. When I asked her, she says she just wanted something new. Shoot. Wow. Good right. Good that right. That was dope. Everyone. Right. right, everyone. Oh, Woo. give it up for Shocky G. Shocky, you shocked all of us. That was yeah. Buy electrifying. Find that book. Flowers. Shocky G. Com, flowers. right? It's excellent. Post Shocky up them links. Again. Shocky strikes again. Always like a bolt of lightning. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. That's why you one of my homies. <laughs> homie. Like, oh, I love you. All right. So we have one more performer before um we go into our feature. Uh Skiff, you you lost your spot. I'm sorry, brother, but Nama's gotta dip out soon and I know you're here for the night. So um we're gonna let Nama go ahead and uh and, and do her piece. So, Naima, if you could unmute yourself and bless us with some words, sister, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Um, thank you. I'm going to share a couple of poems. You uh, ain't been here on Fridays. Yeah, I haven't. It's, it's so late, but I do try to stay up for you, but so many times I end up falling asleep. Okay, um, I'll go straight into the poem. Uh, Breasts. Translucently delicate, finely sculpted orbs, drooping forbidden fruit, jiggling with each wiggle, cupping your fate, nuzzled, suckling cheeks, enveloped in the fragrance of talcum powdered womb, guzzled liquid nurture, finding, drawing glances in a low cut top, a lover's face buried in their fleshy down, idolized, objectified, gazing jouissance, in public, feeding, the eyes of scorn, touted on the products they adorn, their standards grieving, in the bathroom, dreading and hoping, frantically groping, the life giver, the lady killer, waiting with impending doom. You are blooming beauty. You are the menacing beast, sagging and deflating with time. As the odds decline, Athena's blooms, wilting fatally, gasping for time or cut with saving cruelty. Thank you. 
And uh, the second piece. You. What the eye captures, I long to share with you who crown every ecstasy in the smile that illuminates air in the spent scent that filters through me in the word once despised, now beloved from you, how it rolls off your tongue, expanding the heart, enticing and inviting in all that you do. Liquid language drips like honeyed art. When you retreat into thought and gaze silently, words are not needed. When your presence is felt, the well still quenches when I sip sparingly from the hand which pens re lost reveries digress. You who reimagine life in high definition, bringing quintessential quality to each scene. The tree grows mighty, but lacks sweet fruition. When we are two, we bring silver to the screen. What the soul saves, it saves close to you. So it bathes in your essence, beautified. What the ear hears cannot compare to you. Your timber finds root in the toughest of ply. You who bestow ablution in the grace you compel, bringing the restful sleep of lulled lullaby, the heavens that open by the clouds you dispel, softly sighing the soul's soliloquy. What the flesh feels makes it real and rapturous delight. As you firmly lift me with ease and care, as you mold around my shape until day sees off night, when life gifts as you do, how I long to share. Thank you. Neymar, oh, we've missed you. I've missed that voice, just that, oh. And so, soliloquy, just like, oh. Everybody unmute and give it up for the wonderfully talented. Neymar, love Neyma. your flow, Tom, Tom. love such, your flow. Such amazing words, craftsmanship. Thank you. Love the flow, I felt like it, I was kind of bobbing along on the ocean or something. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. All right, so before my internet gets too bad, I'm hoping I can get this man introduced. The man of the reason we're all here. Um, Nicholas Paleologos is a poet, spoken word artist, host, workshop facilitator. He has performed online and in person, open mics, including the New Yo. He was featured at the NYC Poetry Festival in 2021 and 2022. He has facilitated workshops with Oye Group, Tumble Words Project, and Fin Cabulary. Um, he has worked on and contributed to three anthologies, Quarantize, I Can't Breathe, and Love Letters to Gaia. Peter Green book. If you want to post some links, tell us what's been going on with you, Nick. I know you do. Looks and um get into this feature set, man. Bless us with some words, bro. I'm so excited. I wish that up a long time ago. I'm mean, so excited to hear this set. Thank you, brother. Thank Let's do this, people. Good to be here. Hi, I'm Nick. It's nice to meet you. I got a quick trigger. As I take my mind and spit out sentences like they are menaces to society. 
I've been called the Jersey Jesus. Maybe it's my facial hair or how I let it flow through the air. Maybe it's how I carry my burdens all over my shoulder. Maybe it's because I've died a thousand deaths for my sins. Maybe it's because I beat myself up too much. Maybe it's my blood from my wounds that have flowed to the earth to become ink that salts the very earth. I don't know. I have been called a prophet who raises the voices up to the platform so we can all eat at the top. It gets lonely up there. And I've sunk into sultry sea depths, swam with sea urchins to know I can't hang with the sharks. I have been beaten and bruised, been hooked on lines and sunk even lower into the depths of the unknown. And to still have some ounce of kindness in me is a miracle of its own. I have starved myself upon my own cross, emaciated dreams. I don't preach what Jersey Jesus should do. I preach what you should do. How you can better yourself. How you can be the best version of you. How you can feel my pain. And I don't ask for sympathy or empathy. I ask you to listen. I have drowned enough in liquor to fill a whole ocean. Woke up as a fish with knowledge that I was better with off with the dolphins. I ask you again to listen. These next minutes will change your life. I hope we're all having a good time, and so far I am having a good time, and I'm loving hearing each and every one of you. Thank you, Thomas, for what you've done. This is a great community you got over here. So with that said, that was one of my newer ones. It's my intro piece. And I'm going to go into something that actually... This is something that I wrote, I think it was a few days ago, actually. This is really new and everything, too, as well. And this is going to go into another one, actually, too, as well, that I wrote. So, this one is, if you don't know anything about Jersey, I'm going to teach you about Jersey today. So, this one's called the, uh, the Guide to New Jersey, at least in my version. When someone says, I'm from Jersey, the translation is, this is where I come from. We debate over Taylor Ham and Pork Roll. Bruce and Bon Jovi, North versus South Jersey, the shore points that are the best, where we can find the devil himself, whether the gates of hell are in Clifton or in the Pine Barrens. Where we come from, if the smog don't kill you, the cold looks do. And if that don't, the swamps will get you. And if that don't, then the taxes will. When we say it's brick outside, translation, who the fuck told God to lower the thermostat? This is the state that Bennies and Shoebies come to invade the spaces of sand and leave parking at a premium for us. Hope you like $40 parking lots. Did you eat actually is, did you eat yet? The lingo is only part of us. The seasons, there are actually 12 seasons as opposed to the four the people are probably used to. It goes first winter, second, don't buy the heat wave, third, second winter, fourth, fake spring, fifth, third winter, sixth, the pollination, seventh, the monsoon, eight, actual spring, nine, Satan's doorstep, ten, actual summer, eleven, the leaves, and number twelve is fall. Global warming is a thing, people. Just ask us about it. We experience all seasons in a day or a week. And if we're lucky, maybe throughout the year. Did you know that Disco Denver died here? It's in the form of fries, the substitute for therapy because healthcare is expensive. Our state bird is the middle finger, and the fact that we have three of the most dangerous cities in the U.S. from Camden to Newark, not Newark, not Newark, it's Newark, and Patterson, we are built different. Don't get me started on the roads. 65 is just a suggestion on the highway. It's Mad Max and Fury Roads are everywhere. See, this state, You'll love it, and when you leave it, and hate it when you're here. But damn it, it's home to me. And by the way, no one here says Joyzy. It's Jersey, or New Jersey, the Garden State. And I am amongst the many flowers that have bloomed. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, this is also another one of my new ones, actually. I was at the beach when I wrote this one. 
here's some, some thoughts that I had on the beach. I miss the days where we go to get cheese balls at two o'clock in the morning after a night on the town on a shoreline so far yet so close to home where the cigarettes and weed were our ticket to paradise where the water bottles full of whiskey and blues drowned the pain in our souls i miss the shore but not the drama that that jersey shore cast brought i bet they don't even know what taylor ham is I just miss the old days where living carefree didn't cost you a dime. Where the shore was a festival, not corporatized and gentrified. I don't even recognize the old venues, the graffiti, or even the faces anymore. I reminisce over these times in the form of photography, hoping that one day, one day, I'll greet the ocean and fall in love with the shore again. Yeah. Woo. Nice. It really is sad what is happening with the, what I've seen happen to the Jersey Shore and everything. So it's, and that, it's not just there. It's, it's also a lot of other places around the state too, as well as happened. And it's really, really sad, you know, but um, yeah, that was that piece right there. Um, we're going to get back to some of the new stuff, but this is my my baby right here. Ad versus reaction. Ad versus reaction. Get that. I love the title too, man. It's so dope. Ad versus reaction. Yes, this is a buy his book. Reaction. Yeah. I'll definitely drop a link of, or drop a how you can buy it from me and everything. You can either go to red or greenbooks.com or I have plenty of copies um, available through me. I actually. And so if we them. order it through you, it's they'll be signed. Yep, and it'll be signed and everything. You can order it through the website, but like it will, it will be definitely be like you know, like you just get a copy and that's it. I will sign it and I personalize all of it too as well and give you a little note too as well, and go from there and everything too. So we'll work that out and everything in terms of that and everything, and then we'll go from there in terms of uh, books and everything. But I finally got my packaging stuff like out of storage. I got like my most of my books out of storage and everything i literally happened today too so it was like, i know you were telling me i'm moving stuff around i'll get you my bio in a minute <laughs> <laughs> i'm that's what i was doing i was doing all that like moving stuff like like around and everything too as well like i literally just got all all like my funkos are literally sitting there looking at me like finally we see this freaking room <laughs> but enough about that we're gonna go into the book and everything too as well um i haven't done this i don't think i've ever read this one actually um from my book this is this one i don't think i've ever done i've wrote this one a long long time ago but um this one actually yeah i'm gonna do it this one's called red in the face from my book Embarrassment is a weapon that never works. A weapon more potent than nuclear quirks. Embarrassment does not work. Humiliation is shoved down the throats. Bottled up emotions blockade the energy. Just put some Mentos in the soda vessel. Watch the body boil. The match is lit turn into a fiery lava a continuation of the saga spew the flames out chaos has come about embarrassment is a weapon that never works the human suppresses secrets of self for mockery of physical features one must be ready to face it denounce the deed work with the right organizations embarrassment can destroy a body there comes a time in everyone's life where when enough is enough, a time to start the process, to heal, to feel again, instead of numb within a strum of a new beat, there will come a time where anger and sad anger, sadness and madness will no longer control us, that we may objectively look at the mirror, see the damage done, 
people. We can stare at embarrassment, tell embarrassment to scram, scurry away. Let's heal. Let's start again. Let's not embarrass anyone anymore. another one right there. yeah thank you thank you so much everyone i was a little uh i was a little i was trying to figure out my set list literally like 20 minutes right before i'm like what do i want to do what do i want to do and everything you know <laughs> you know i'm glad that one that y'all like that one too um we're gonna go into another one from the book we're gonna go into something that i actually one of the few that i have actually had memorized from the book this one is called Memory Loss. I got drunk off a dictionary. Mix and mince rhymes with dark arts. Magic from alchemaic stones, a philosophical past. I got high off a thesaurus that rolls up. Replications, inflections, illustrious illusion smoke some spell binding puff puff pass through circles of conjured conjunctions injecting injuries snorting sounds to drop another piece of me to paper leaving behind the blood dyed ink creation comes at a cost sanity and sleep i got drunk off a dictionary I got high off at the source. I just wish I could remember all the words. All right. Can I shock you? We love you. Thanks for coming through. Hey, that piece is, I love that you're like, this is one of the only ones I've memorized from the book, and it's called Memory Loss. <laughs> It literally is the most ironic thing ever in the world. I have so much trouble memorizing my pieces. It is crazy. I think I only Yo, same here, one. man. I agree. I have like maybe two. I know I have two memorized. I know I can get I'm working on I think I had a third one that I had memorized, but I'm still trying to remember that one. And then I have a bunch of haikus that I have memorized, and that's pretty much really like where I'm at right there. Um so I wanted to do something also like, you know, we saw like the fun side of me from the book and like, you know what I mean and everything. But this one actually kind of is a little bit more vulnerable for me. So, and this is also another new one of mine and everything. But, you know. Oh, is this better? Can we hear me now better? Yeah, you were like kind of muted. I have mine like up on 80 or 90. I think I have to... Uh, this, these wires are weird and everything. What can I say? <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's see it. Everything you know, we're gonna go ahead and go into a new one of mine, but uh, it's also uh, it's also a bit uh, you know, sad. But here we go. This one's called Mannequin. Take my body, nail me up with strings and screws. Put marker on the face. Make it pretty. Contort my body in a way that hasn't been done before. Watch tendons tear, muscles spasm, bones become rubber. Make it dance. Make it a Frankenstein. Turn it cybernetic. Copper becomes android. I haven't been to Detroit, so I'm not becoming human. From XL to medium, with sprinkles of anorexia in between, chiseled plastic into an incomplete creation. It took 20 years to sand and sculpt, remove of the, removal of the bits and pieces of me. Watch out. You better not eat 1,500. Caloric intake of tops, 1,000. All the compliments won't matter if the reflection speaks ill. Mirror, mirror on the wall. You aren't the prettiest of them all. You aren't the prince charming amongst the snow white. You aren't even beastly enough to get the rings of the bells. 
You aren't the Herculean standard society set. There's no chime in your smile, no charm in your eyes, just a hollow mannequin praying across the strings to gods that don't answer prayers on Sunday. Break the mirror all you want. The voice don't shut up. Maybe your reflection isn't pretty. Disguise your stuff all you want. Lipstick won't look good on you, let alone makeup can't hide your scars. You aren't pretty in person. That picture could not be more deluded to those statements. Okay. There we go, right there. So, let's go into another one and everything. I think we'll do one other... Well, let's see, I started at 7.55. I think we can do maybe two more, and then we'll hear more open mic, and then I'll do a little... Maybe if we have time, maybe we can get to a little bit more of me. So I'll do two more for you all, too, as well, and everything. Um, this one is an older one. I also love this one a lot, too, as well. But I love chess, if you know me. I love chess, and I wrote a piece that centers around chess. This one's called Pawn in the Game. The pawn is a quite an interesting piece. Only can look and move forward and diagonally. Once progress happens, there is no turning back. A pawn stuck in perpetual motion, trying to eat the opposing pawns. Kings and queens deploy them until the bishops, rooks, and knights sweep them off the board. Pawns walked into the war to combat poverty. Many fall into the, he into the hands of fear. Trading bullets for bunches of food, trading grenades for water, trading mines for clothes. Pawns fall by the wayside, trying to level up the directions to go. When will the pawns realize they are playing 2D chess? The higher orders play 5D chess. When will they realize? They have been the most important pieces on the board. When will they take crowns and wear them as royalty? When will they not be a pawn in someone else's game? All right. Yo, yeah, buddy. Wow. That was good. Heavy. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Yeah, I, I do love that piece a lot, too, as well. Um, and I'm going to be I'm working on another chess piece. Unfortunately, that's not ready for today. But it's oh, that'll be cool. The, it's going to be centered yeah, around the queen. So like I'm, I'm giving you all a little preview about that one. I'm working on that one right now, and that one's not quite ready. However, so, and the, of concept. Indeed, indeed. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait for that one. Um, the last one, that, that for, for now anyways, the last one for now is actually another new one, actually. that This one came to my head, and I like how it turned out, so I'm just going to drink this water, and then we're going to go into it. So there we go. We live in an age where meaning has none. When all said and done, the mind will tell a lie, or two, or twenty. Depends on how you like reality. Augments of statements flood, flow out the lobes, down to the heart. Makes it calm, races back and forth. Where the eyes warp visions, sounds muffled, sense more heinous. Reality is becoming more artificial by day. By night, it continues exponentially. Creating God isn't ideal. It's too late for that. People have done so for years. It's only now being realized. The sirens sung songs. Instead of preparation, they danced. 
mindless gaffes over the course of time, the feeling of the disconnect has been here, always has, when a doubter arises. Give life meaning. Give life purpose. Give so that we may thrive. We aren't thriving out here. We're dying for connection. We're dying for purpose. We're dying for a pulse. We all want the same things. Love. Food. Water. Shelter. Purpose. We want to live. Make not artificial intelligence. Make real change. Mm. Nick, thank you, sir, so much for coming and doing this feature. I'm so excited to hear the encore. I know you got some more good stuff planned for us. We got about a baker's dozen worth of uh, open micers that we're going to burn through. We get to hear a whole bunch of other great poetry coming out. But before that, can we all unmute and thank and give all the love to Nick Pelia Logos for coming out and doing this feature for us all tonight? Yeah. Great job. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Take down the chessboard and AI. That's good. I want to hear you do it. Now you gotta go deep. <laughs> I gotta go deep. Also, I gotta go deep. And yeah, that's just you just starting. You just start. I want to hear you do a poem <laughs> about the Pulaski Skyway. I will totally do that for you, Skip. <laughs> Yo, if Skip requests a poem, you did. I'm definitely that would, gonna have yeah. to work on a poem about the right Pulaski that. Skyway. Yo, I'm, I'm, I'm down. I am so down. I, I when okay. it's ready, I will, I will, I'll come. I'll bring it, and I'll be like, here we go, let's go. <laughs> also, um, Nick. Yes. I, I know you will love me promoting you, so I put in the chat. Um, I run a podcast called the Poetic Robin Hood Podcast, and Nick is the future for September. So that episode is going to be up on September 4th, Labor Day. So mm, check make sure y'all go check that out for sure. Get them links. Yeah. Check them out on the podcast. Christopher, thank you so much uh, for showing up to me. Thank you so much for showing so much love for Nick and, and featuring him thank on you. a podcast. I'm excited to hear that. Oh. Um, well, here's the thing. I show him on a podcast. He forgives me of my poetry spells. So it works out. <laughs> we have an agreement. <laughs> bet, bet, bet. All right, excellent. So yeah, we're gonna uh, keep this thing rolling because I want to hear more of Nick to come, and we got so many other great poets lined up. Um, yeah, who, who's gonna start us off in this round one? None other than Skiff, because you know he he was supposed to go before the feature, but internet issues. So um, we got Skiff, and then I had to bump CC up just after skiff because um cc has company coming over and we don't want to take up you know all their time yeah. and whatnot so so skiff if you can unmute yourself and bless us with some words brother i would appreciate it okay thanks it's so great great to see everybody here thanks for that wonderful feature nick it's been a while since i've heard you go on at length and uh it's just a treat so thanks. Um, Going to do a, not a too short of a piece, but I don't think it's too long. It's it's more of a prose thing. It's a, sort of a bunch of snapshots of uh, the Lower East Side uh, from about 30 years ago. It begins with a Yoruba proverb. The people who say they are teaching you to be tall are the same people who are teaching you to be small. Because there is a difference between someone who can show you peace, love, and progress and someone who is telling you they have peace, love, and progress, meaning you can have it too if you just come to them, but maybe difference isn't something we can pretend isn't there. You can't make anything out of difference anyway. Someone is holding themselves down beneath their cock or cunt in a pornographic soap opera where they finally have some control. I should have said this piece is into the harsh zone. So if you're not into harsh, time to mute. 
In January, your stove died. In June, your refrigerator. The landlady said she just visited building owner in Jackson State Prison, Detroit. She wants you to be sure about how they do business in the city of fire and no compromise. If only you could wait until the complaint department inspector comes by, but the one-armed teenager with no place to sleep finds it easier to get in the front hall for its shade. Not having any bills to pay can chase a person to a place like that. Falling is a comfortable thing to do and no one will see it happen to you. A previously right-handed 15-year-old can show you how to bury yourself in something as simple and available as a little sleep. Just heave everything out of your mind. You stop wearing rings. You stop wearing a watch. Wedging yourself up to the East River makes you feel like you are too close to wearing an ornament that is supposed to mean something, but doesn't. That is supposed to tell you something but doesn't. A wave is something you will just fall through like the ability of the landlady to keep running her mouth on you over the phone. Inside you pop with the speed of soundlessness in a light bulb. Your neighbor's smiles have gone out the same way, and the anti-folk singer you keep hearing practice through the breezeway doesn't sound authentic anymore. So you think, maybe you should practice feeling good decide not to, then spend the next half hour calling people on the phone, but no one is home, and the one person you finally reach tells you they feel like their head is going to explode, so they can't talk now. The train seems closer coming down the tunnel, and that makes it have less weight, more preciousness. It is an exact train now, and it is easy for your flaw to not be able to see it before, like young females at the curb selling smoke who, when they see you instead, ask, do you need anything? Do you want anything? They are faces on heads stacked over bodies lined on the train bench that lull and float ordered only by speed rushing them uptown. It's not a Glock because it is black. The Super 9, whose refined immaculate chambers expand, conceive, contract with hydraulic barks down the block that is half there and undergoing another small removal of its contents, whether the removal is the monopoly on noise bought by traffic and congas, little Polly crying from another bully session, spilling hydrant and silent dodging of two or three different language, or whether the removal is made up of something formerly a person whose laugh sizzle away on a deformed slug that bounced off a 12th rib jelly to liver and is clamped in the corner of the Corona girl's smile, pasted up on the bodega door. You are struggling to live a life not ended by craziness that pounces like an abrupt drop in blood pressure, or hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil, abandonment, all the ways a neighborhood can bite back at itself like like that, a mangled piece of metal in the corner of the Corona girl smile. Hear the dripping of someone's laugh down preposterous glass, the glass that is just a punk bitch that wishes it was on TV all the time. You can't think anything anymore that isn't out of a program of abuses and neglectings that wasn't just waiting for your seed. When they've changed that too, the art factory, that big building, that art factory where strugglers are warehoused and swindled by the landlord who had his lawyers turn him into a piece of information so that he passes like mere illuminations from screen to screen. So even the Catholic Church can't erase him, even though they're the real landlord. The Catholic Church can't erase him while he sublets his building to his own self, lets the building go while the street rots like a tooth too sweet with people trying to experience some beauty made, found, or broken and entered. Make some beauty and stand in front of it. Dance through it. Sit still and shut yourself down so beauty can pour into your ears. But the city won't give in. People are too busy paying their attention out to what they want, and it isn't there. You decide to get out of the way for the embarrassment of riches is a certain kind of nakedness. Signs of fabricated personal triumph as big as three tons worth of compromise cannot be hidden in plain sight like the pictures of the latest two formerly 
the formerly ethnic men to make Hollywood movies who stand in a one-armed tug with postures that balance their huge stomachs into the flash bulb. They are like people who are fighting against something invisible, paste announcements on public surfaces, hoping to keep whatever it is away. But you know what? It never comes out. The engine shrinks underneath its lights, twirling rigid red, blue, and green blades, syncopating buildings that are silent about whatever emergency, while a person gets arrested for sleeping on the corner in a chair no one wants, and no one has gotten used to how life is garbage, even people with pretty names. You think you are about about what you would, you are thinking about what you will use next to try and kill the bugs in your room while the witness and her daughter knock on your door and you wonder why so many fucking things that want to try to take something from you seem to end up in this neighborhood while down the street the firefighters douse the smoldering mattress and help themselves to the radio camera and jar of pennies. Special types of people like the Pentecostal girls who dress to make your bones ache or the woman who has lived too long in the cracks and is talking to a rusty license plate. They move untouched by anything so temporary as your ambition to hang out into the small hours of the morning when it will cool off. The Pentecostal girls are beyond that horizon, and the woman who has lived too long in the cracks gets God stuff from things too simple for you to notice. Don't step on that candy wrapper, rare as a blind pigeon. Instead of continuing his plumber's apprenticeship, the super married a young divorced mother whose parents set him up with a black ranger jeep, and now they are having twin girls. When signs go up in the stairwell about broken plumbing, not one single word is spelled right, but it makes more than sense because... You can shortfall onto prosperity, the way some out-of-town speculator chose to condoize the building across the street from yours, which means soon the corner will be well lit, finally, after all these years, and you might find actually a $100 bill dropped on the curb next year because nobody is asking you to be a slut. And a person can be very happy as one. Or we can say, or can we say, that isn't important either. It's just a simple magic trick, such as pretending you like your unimportance, but you aren't the man sitting in the full sun on 14th Street, shucking his maraca full of change, who has no place on his face where eyes should be. You aren't the woman with three children living in a squat on 13th Street who has just fallen in love with another woman. The rumor is Avenue D will be a shopping mall and East 8th Street will be turned into a retail strip with a health spa. El Sombrero Restaurant will either really get a liquor license or get turned back into a French restaurant where limos pull up to empty out hammerheads. Someone else's image of the future next door seems official. The day you were born, the nail for the coffin was made. Fucking A, mic drop, dude. The day you were born, the nail for the coffin was made. Holy shit. Everybody, wait, before you unmute yourself, get up for Skiff. I love Frog Corps. I love Skiff. I love the way they perform uh, their poetry best when they get a little like, you know, da da da, right? Like, and so I was like, yo, y'all two need to collaborate, right? Can you imagine hearing a Frog Corpse and Skiff collab? Like, it'd be so dope. Well, Skiff went up me and said, well, I will only do the collaboration if you do the collaboration. I was like, yo, that would be a pretty dope fucking poem, right? But I'm going to one up and say, I'll only do the collaboration if CP Mays does the collaboration. <laughs> Yeah, you heard that. Yeah. Paul Skiff, Frog Corpse, CP Mays, and Thomas Open Minds on a collab. 
the range and intensity with? you know what i'm saying like the range and intensity of that fucking poem is gonna be dope so i now hand the ball the ball is in your court cp if you agree we can the four of us can get on writing on this though yeah you doubt so y'all stay tuned Ooh, yeah for a See, dope collab like we it's gonna be a roller coaster right we're going all over with this one i can already feel it oh um, yeah i'm ready for that you, you sign up cp and that's gonna be yeah. right well i see cp and me was like vibing on that last poem you spit and i'm like you know what all right hold on hold on i'll, I'll do the collab with y'all if cp comes joins it because you gave me that ultimate so i gotta keep passing on. i think you know three people yeah but four people we we throw cp in the mix of this magic we'll get charged with the abusiveness of the speakers i think it's just right? about to say it's gonna be yeah like we're, yeah we're gonna shut zoom down dictionary. knuckle drag yeah. out fight with a dictionary that's what uh, oh this is gonna be good Hey, we need to, uh, we'll all get on like an I, a shared IG chat and, and spit around concepts and ideas and like, right, you know, like, we'll, or I'll do a Zoom meeting where we can all join up and, and work on it together because that's going to be amazing. Just um, set it up and kick it off, Thomas. I'm ready. I got y'all boys for sure. Oh, uh, everybody do me a favor, unmute yourselves and give it up for the great Paul Skiff. Amazing. Hey. 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 What's happening? No room on your face. Oh, no. <laughs> that like was a Paul, lot. Paul, Paul, Paul. But you know, you're not. What's what's it, man? Just uh, it's mind blowing. It's amazing. So it's like just like like a thousand beautiful bombs in there, just exploding the stereotypes of the shit we believe. It's just beautiful. Well, thanks, CP. The crazy thing about that piece of writing is it's all real. You know? I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's what makes it amazing the big fuck you is in the air cells i don't know man you gotta clean that shit up but poets can do that and you're doing the work i appreciate you definitely hey uh cc so you know i know you gotta leave and so well, here at open minds we're very flexible right and so we move people around and we make the show flow right um yeah, my respect to amazing. everyone for you doing that it's it just that somebody's gonna be walking in the door and i don't want to like it's right here yeah. you know well, so check this out. Um, CP Mays has something that he wants to give to you and Megus. It can't be recorded, so I'm going to have to shut the recording off for a minute here. We're going to let CP drop this piece, and then you can go, CC, and then you can play us. But but he got a gift for you, so he you know he wanted to make sure that he shared it with you before for you let, if you don't mind. No, no, no. I mean, if I if, if something happens, I'm gonna stick this out no matter what. If something happens and my turn comes, I'll step aside. You move me up, and I'm just grateful. It's all good. Yeah. Go, go, do it. That's what I love about this. open minds. So, uh, In the CP, receipt. yeah. So, CP, if you could unmute yourself and bless us with some words, brother, I would appreciate it. Yes. So for the two birthday boys, because CC's birthday is coming up too. Um, oh, I didn't even know that. Oh, we forgot the same birthday again. Yeah, here's, here's the sneaking in. Uh, I wanted to share something that I don't share with anybody, really. Um, to give of myself to you guys who give so much back to me in forms of compliments and encouragement and all of that. So two pieces. The last one is the one I really want to give you. Um, this one is called, I want to destroy something right now. I want to destroy something right now. Maybe I should start with the lady that gave birth to the baby that murdered my Marine Corps brother. Move on to the demons in that dark place that keep me pinning poems to win back God's grace. Maybe murder metaphor or a microphone. Some say there's a baby Jesus breathing in the back of my jawbone, riding into this concrete generation, generating God birthed me from concrete and stone. Concrete ocean of love me. Me, leave me, love me the fuck alone. I want to destroy something right now. Because at the end of every night, I debate whether I want to hate myself or hurt myself. My chest plate is a collection plate of past the hat features, fears. And if I don't force myself to wake up in the morning, then maybe this life wasn't my birthright. Because honestly, honesty is hung over, heartbroken, homeless and hardly has the courage to speak she taught me truth 
is absolute concrete. Most of our wounds are self-inflicted. But my preferred method of madness is water torture, brainstorms, thunderclaps, keep what I kill, flesh. It's just the living will that I keep track of by burying what I write in passage. 32 tombstones in my mouth. The Marine Corps taught me how to smile at my burial rites of passage. For I've been passing by people, passing each other on the pavement, passing out judgments as if they're auditioning for the role of God. Exorcist of Exodus, ignorance is bliss, willing to go half on a baby with two slit wrists. We're extending family like failures, and my heart's a hard copy, rough draft that's hard to goddamn edit. So, dear Mother Mary, ever since separation from your afterbirth, I've been searching for my afterlife. I left my self-esteem in the corners of your womb, and I've been searching for it in other women since then. Mommy, there's a mold in my mist, birds in my walls, Jack Daniels playing dress up with the skeletons in the closet of my tongue. I woke up this morning with a hell of a halo hangover and nothing to put on, so I walked out of my house wearing nothing but thick skin. Last night, cigarette smoke, spooning with the keys of hope in my locks and an open door in my mouth that I'd never learned how to close. So you call me a poet. So I hit the road with one spare change of clothes, hoping the concrete can keep these teeth safe, safe, cause of late. My lungs keep me up like Christ on the cross. I left my life in between your legs and I've been walking in the light ever since then because I am a direct insult what the fuck Satan invested time in. There's still a poem burning in my back bedroom. And I want to destroy something right now. Whew. There's a poem in my back barrel and I want to destroy something right now. See, Pete, amazing as always. And, uh, Let's hear the one... second piece, man. Like, I'm so hyped. So the second piece, um, shit, where did it go? The second piece is one I never, I can't, I can't read it in open mics. Okay, the so hold up. Map, do I? Do you need me to pause the recording for this one? Right? Yes, completely kill the report. All right. Hi, y'all miss out. You should have been there live. Fantastic. <laughs> Woo! So for those of you just Woo! tuning in, yeah. what you yeah. missed you just yeah. missed. Yeah. is a man it's bleeding a the job of oh. being alive. Wow. This, no this is fucking, exactly what poetry nothing, is. Nothing For held real. back. Just no. everything that you could imagine that is dangerous about being born, living, and dying. And then you multiply that a thousand times. And that man just gave to oh. life. And literally spit that life. poem, bro. <laughs> where where, where he where come from, what he's been through, who he is now, what he made, and what he'll leave. All with every ounce of his being. Crafted. You and Megan, you and Megan give beautiful. so much honesty when y'all give poems. It's... I just had to give something honest back. Like something really, really honest as a gift. So It's my religion. Truths die. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. the ticket. So it's a sense of urgency. Bias. It's that kind of sense of urgency. I, you know, that's the kind of poetry that always really sent me off and inspired me from the very first times I started listening to other people doing spoken poetry. It's that just really super intense engagement with the word and how you just you know, it's such a great example of how fucking physical the spoken word is. Just great. Thank you. Say it with chest, boy. Say it with chest. <laughs> Say it with chest. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, happy birthday. Like, play that fucking piano. Give me something to drink, too. Like, let's go. Like, yeah. Happy, happy right. birthday, I, CC. I happy birthday, Megas. CC, Vegas, you bless yeah. us. With so take a little Maurice for us and bless us with some right. words, brother. Uh, we would appreciate it. All right. Um, I, I'm working on the hardest song I've ever worked on. And it's inspired by Nina when I used to play on the radio. 
the song that she did, Feelings. She was live in concert. I think it was in Europe. She's playing Feelings, you know, and uh, and she stops and she turns to the audience and he goes, what a fucking terrible song for somebody to write. How disgusting is that? And it's like Feelings. It's like, oh, I remember that was an earworm song when I was a kid. Feeling that they were... And she goes, who the fuck would write feelings? Nothing more than feelings. Trying to forget my feelings of love. And it was just like fucking pie in the face real. Fucking Nina telling everybody sitting there dead awake, fucking her fans and shit. And, and she tried to get them to sing and she whispered. And she humiliated the shit out of the audience. It was brilliant. So this thing here started out as a song where I wanted to deal with abuse in the adult world and it just creeped in and now it's fucking about pedophilia rape programming children sexual abuse fucking society breeding children to weaponize them from the age of seven with torture and mind games and shit like that and it's like it, it's just fucked up and i'm still working on it but it's 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 fucked up i'm gonna give you just a tiny bit of that and then i'm gonna do something for cp so this is what i'm just like fucking building Starts out before the origins of well, is the, is the uh, uh, music thing on there? Is it breaking up? We good? I think it's good. Before the origins of pain, could break the innocence, be raped, no broken bones. No bleeding, no, no broken bones, no bleeding hearts, just the penetration of the innocent soul. For the transference of hate became reasons vengeance grew before trials of <laughs> no, just, before trials of love's birth da, 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 da. talking about invisible first and shit like that anyway it's it's about the innocence of soul so that's what i'm working on and uh, and it's like I'm doing this. I'm writing this song, and it's like, fuck, man, I can't, I can't do this song. The penetration of fucking children is like, fuck, that's deep shit. So anyway, I'm gonna go over to navigate. This is the newest one I've been working on, and it's in its, uh, it's in its top incarnation at the moment. And um, here it goes. This is called Navigate Indivisible Love, and this is for everyone, but CP especially for uh, just you, you just for you being going through this shit. To be and become who you are and the work it takes to get there doesn't end. And you're fucking, you're the fucking arrowhead in that one, man. You know what you're doing. You know, it's fucking unapologetic beauty, man. In the before, through it all and in the after. Falling through love into indivisible love. Through the kind that is divisible. While falling to rise as indivisible love. Now here comes the awareness where my heart and lungs are whole. Yes, my peace of mind resides here, right where fear itself is trying to break it. Sure, all stories bleed with endings oh but that doesn't make it so so if you believe in only one thing and that one thing is 
You don't have a choice. Oh, did you say you don't have a choice? Did you say you don't have a choice? If so, you're someone, someone who was played here, or you're just a player with an enslaved soul playing it for real. At the cost of every other. While some say time is of the essence, some say time is a lying thief. Your soul is not a clock controlling you. Do not fear death, and fear itself can't own you. Do not fear death. And fear itself can own you, you, as long as you have choices, questions, every dream you dream here is a dream to free you, every dream you dream here is a dream to free you. Every dream you dream here is a dream to free you. Every dream you dream here is a dream to free you. Every dream you dream here is a dream to free you. In the before, through it all, and in the after. Falling through love into indivisible love. Falling through love into indivisible love. Okay, keep going. Through the kind that is the visible. While falling to rise as in the visible world. I will, will be navigate in the visible love. I will, will you navigate indivisible cc holy Woo! shit cc thank you so much brother buy that book Woo! if Vegas is holding up CC, we love you. You are a musician. Don't ever say you're not. It was amazing. <laughs> um, so I, so much so that I had to take it off the headphones and, and play it to everyone in the room here. So, oh um, man, thank you so much. I got the book here. It's at my website. I got my email. It's my birthday week on the twenty second. So on Sunday, for the last for the first time in two years, I didn't do the human room open voice. So I'm gonna have kind of an open one where I explain this project I'm working on. And any anybody send me an email, you get an invite noon Sunday, Eastern time. It's my last name at Gmail. Uh, if you're watching this before Sunday the 20th uh, at noon Eastern time, and uh, you'll get an invite. It's a couple hours long. Yeah, happy 21st pretty... birthday. <laughs> I'm gonna be 65. Uh, I'll skip so, says you turn to 21. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's cool that you I, go drink I, I, at the bars now and stuff. Hold Congratulations, on. you know. They fucked up on my life. They, they made me older. I can get into a bar. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> man, thank you so much, man. CC Link. Thank you. And happy birthday to my to my brother, Gustav Derry. It looks like we're sharing the same week. Yeah. 
All right. Yo, Gustav made me feel old on Wednesday when he told he sent me a message. Hey, it's my birthday today, and I was like, dude, I thought you were like, t- I'm like, how old are you turning? I thought he was like 10 years older than me. I just turned 39, I think this year, 38, 39, 40, yeah, 39. And so I'm thinking like, oh, he's got to be like 45, 48, you know, maybe today he's turning 49, you know, like I was thought he was just like 10 years older than me, you know, and, and, and he goes, no, I'm turning. Can I say it? Yeah, nay, nod. He's debating. <laughs> put it, put it this way. He's a little more than 10 years older than me. And I was like, man, that makes me feel old because I thought you was just like 10 years older than me. So it's either I feel old or you are just young and vibrant and just grabbing life. But you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you're not I'm old. I'm going to say the not, age. I'm going to say the age. It's cool. Put I, a thumbs I, I up. Just, I just stopped at a friend's house and her mother was fucking yeah. 90. And she's Yo. just kicked. She's badass. Yeah. And my she's grandfather's, I think, 96 here. now. And, and, and they it, made it, they made him stop working. This this shit gets old and fucking wrinkly. But then what CP was doing with that shit don't age. Yeah, it gets wiser, and you become uh, you get a little better at learning from your own shit and getting through it. But what you, you, be where you are? Don't be older or younger. Fuck that shit. Just fuck that shit. Don't be older. Hey, you're, or younger. you're as old as you, you are feel, here right? now, and this is your soul's ride. And you're going to die. It doesn't matter how many people you loved, how many people you killed. When you're gone, God, you're this gone. was your ticket. This was <laughs> your it. ride. Leave something good that to be, be a little better each day. That's it, man. If you if you got it, you got it. You got your first poem. Or you're fucking, yeah. I say, if you're the poet Lord of the universe, tough shit. Yeah. Next poet's just as good. Yeah. Your time. Hey, here. We're all it's here to time. share and love and all that. Look, Paul seven, Debbie's 14, Magus. And old people still Wednesday, get down. Don't give me that shit. 59. 59. <laughs> we're better at it, man. <laughs> Would y'all guess that? 59. It, it don't I, matter to me. I thought he yeah. was like 49, bro. At the most. I thought he was like 45. Like, I thought he was just a few years older than me. And then to find out that he was turning 59, I was like, I'm, I'm old. I'm no, old. I feel older if, you're if the like, next generation is born without you know, genitalia you know. or fucking shit like that. Because we're Barbie and Ken dolls. Well, don't fucking give me this age yeah, shit. Baby, we're baby, walking in. Baby. We're walking into a paradigm shift of our species where we're gonna yeah. be a food supply. How old are you? Fuck that shit. Right? Yeah, it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> <laughs> How old's that meat? Ah, oh, it's plump. Let's eat it. Uh, Anyways, I'm not meat yet. Yeah. That's yeah. how old I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're gonna keep the show rolling though. Um, it's been a wonderful night. We still want to hear um, uh, the encore. I think my camera just cut off. Somewhere. If something happens later on, there's a window. I'll pop back in, but I'm going to hang out until that thing happens. Yeah, if you love can pop you in at the end. I was trying to put you at the end because I love it when you play us out. But but you have company coming, so I wanted yeah, to slide. When they, when they I had to slide door, CP before that so he can do his thing for you. And, you know, uh, it's, it's you know open minds. We like to just do good show, right? Don't matter the order. Like, let's just all have a good time. So here, I'll just give my email and my uh, website and everyone just jump on that. Please send me your email and, and say, ask for an invite. You'll have it. Yeah. Black blast Thank off, you. man. Get, get in connect with this man. CC is so, so dope, man. And I appreciate you showing up here every Friday since the first time you showed up, you know, it's, I find we we're, we're kind of sticky in that way. We, it's it's hard to get away from each other on Friday nights, you know, unless you're like really busy with something. But anyways, speaking of someone who's stuck around since the beginning, um, if we do, my wife and I go go decide to take a little camping trip September. I'm gonna set it up. I'll give you Zoom login, right? So you can log into the Open Mind Zoom account. You can launch it there, host it, record it, do everything from there. Cause we will be in the woods before winter comes. So yeah. This man right here is the third wheel. It's me, Catalyst, and Magus, like, running this thing. And CP's in the back making all the magic for everything, you know? But he just, that's that's all the inspirational magic he's on. So, but yeah, this man's the third wheel of open minds. Uh, we love him like a brother. We did that beautiful uh, piece. Me and Daniel uh, did that beautiful piece for him, tribute piece for his birthday. I don't know if CP missed that or not. I don't know if he showed up in time for that one. But I'm not, you didn't see it? Okay, cool. Cause yeah, it was it was beautiful, man. Um, and we just love you so much. Happy birthday! This man's 
59 years old. I thought he was 35 or 45 or, you know, somewhere in that range. You're looking great. After the show, I'm going to call you on Instagram. You got to tell me what you eat, what you put in your face, what you do all, you know, to, to look like that. So 20 years from now, I can look like you because I just thought you was, you know, 10 years older than me. And I'm like, he's 20 years old. OK, anyways. Yeah. Gustav, if you could bless us with some words, my brother, I would greatly appreciate it. You got to unmute first. Though. Hey, Thomas. Hey, beloved poets. Uh, can I get a thumbs up? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We got you, brother. Can you guys hear me? Hello? Got you. Got you. We got you. Do you got us? Oh, OK. <laughs> OK. Bit of lag, but yes, I can this. hear you now. OK. So, um, I am doing a collaborative piece I wrote with Emily Cordes author of this wonderful collection, Armful of Poppy. It is a beautiful work. I advise you to get it. Um, this is called The Fool's Journey. The good parts are mine. The great parts are hers. Here we go. The Fool. Earth, air, water, fire. The Fool's Journey appears quite dire, walking blindly off a cliff. He's optimistic, but will never know if. The fool will fall to his death or live to breathe another breath. Each day is borrowed. Live your life. Transcend this plane of mortal strife. Fools rush in where angels fear to tread. May they ascend, casting faith in new horizons. Journeys of a thousand miles begun, praying that your wings will work or trusting that in failing you will learn, void up by those same open arms you throw out to the skies for faith's a form of magic embrace it and you will fly enchantment lives in everything beyond what eyes can see surrender to unknowing and face the mystery the magus the magus a magician the word beautician syllabic incantations defying expectations verbal wands of power a million thoughts that flower are flag fragrant roses from my pen, from Kether to Malkuth and back again. A master of the pentacles with rhymes that wrap like tentacles around your brain and in your soul. Illumination is my goal. My sword of truth cuts through the air. Cosmic consciousness, a family affair. The human mind, a sacred conduit to mysteries we are bound to into it like water flows from cups of gold and fortune ever favors the bold. Embrace the emotions that you feel. Love is the only thing that's real. The lovers, love is the path. Love is the alchemy from separateness to union, from ego to duality. Beyond this earthly plane, the love we share remains an echoed canyon counterpoint against time's ceaseless refrain. Love is the law, love under will. Love is the way, the light, and the truth, a unity and harmony divine. Though common sense plays little part in affairs of the heart, we attain the highest wisdom when we love. Strength. When love and honor guide us, our spirits reach new heights, base instincts tamed, not by restraint, in peace and certainty we find our might. True warriors and gardens, mere gardeners, seed war. In our divinity, we rest secure. The lion led by a chain of flowers, by a woman in the fullness of her powers. Infinite energy leaps from the card. Fortitude, when times are hard, courage will light the way, and surely you will win the day. Life's tempest may unfold in strength, our center holds an ever constant beacon in the skies to light our way. The star, the moon, and the sun. You are the sun, the source of my light and inspiration. You are the moon, you light my night and give me insight. You are the star that guides this fool on his journey. In you I trust, I will love you till we both turn to dust. And we are made of stardust that same hydrogen and carbon, 
the same stars ancestors followed in the dark now guide us and the same dance of the seasons sun and moon throughout the heavens shapes our lives in cosmic cycles in this endless wheel we spin upon a boundless web in which we're all connected the wheel of fortune every day is a new spin on the wheel of fortune step right up test your luck and manifest your will oh mysterious sphinx what divine intent dost thou have? But the Sphinx does not reply. Her response, a cryptic smile. Foolish mortals, we aspire to interpret fortune's mind, or with the cards and runes divine, cheat the houses loaded die. Many fail, though all have tried, brave or foolishly defied the limits of our agency, the hidden forces governing our lives. Will we raise arms against a sea of trouble? In our hubris, on those same swords die. The minor arcana. With this sword of truth, I will to think. With this cup of water, my feelings I drink. With this wand of passion, I spit fire. With this pentacle of earth, I am bound to this world inspired. The fool becomes the magus, master manipulator of the elements. All is love, love under will, as above, so below, as above, so below, as above, so below. Each element in nature we possess, the mighty will not bind us by convincing us that we are powerless. The major and the minor, high and low, fool, emperor, mage, priestess, all dare to will, to know, to seek a truth that only lives within. The jester speaks this riddle. The journey ends where it begins. King, queen, knight, page. From ecstatic joy to fits of rage. Masculine, feminine, the yin, the yang. The trying, the failing, the storm und lang. The minor arcana's royal suits. From beginning to end, the roots to the fruits. King, queen, knight, page, the journey from fool to sage. Fool's errand turns full circle, the world laid at our feet. The cards spread out before us yield the wisdom that we speak. One chapter ends, but even then, we shuffle, cut, and deal another deck, ceaseless in our striving, tireless in our quest. For even when the path demands, we leap from towers and confront our devils. We journey onward up the hill with grace and heart and reverence. Unite the elements into cosmic consciousness. Behold, this is the greatest story ever told. Thank you. My brother, Magus, thank you so much for that piece. I love that term, inspired piece. By Emily's book. Yeah, by Emily's book. Yeah. Um, Redergreenbooks.com. Shout out to Marissa. Um, yeah, we got you got a couple books to get from redergreenbooks.com. You got to go on there. You got to get this one. You got to get Nick's. We got, or I would actually contact Nick because then you get a, probably a nice autographed, you know, copy with a little message in it. You know, maybe a little haiku written about you and your, you know, poetry style. Nick's a cool guy. He might do that for you. So, um, and, and let's just thank him one more time, real quick, before we move on to the next artist. Because, you know, he's going to do an encore for us, but we still have a few Woo! people lined up. Let's just all give it up for Nick real quick. Just 10 Woo! seconds. Woo! Journey Genius! Woo! 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 Yeah! Encore. Megan, that you, was brother. amazing. Thank you. I loved it. Yeah, I think I think Kate got another poetry crush. <laughs> I, it was <laughs> amazing. One. Uh, and I love the tarot inspirations. That was so cool. And I love, especially like um, the fool always like thwarts like political regimes and things like that and society's notions. And I'm like, that's so fitting for someone who really focuses on um, political poetry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you again so much, Megas. Um, that was wonderful. Love that. I hope I'm not lagging too bad to be able to introduce this next poet because, you know, I got to do this in a certain way. Am I lagging okay? Can you guys hear me? Fine. Am I Loud and clear. All right. 
it was a few months ago I met my brother different place he grew up different mother in fact but really when you think back to the time that we was all one family he was more my brother than he could ever be um the way that he manipulates this 3d space that all the words come from there's no else how to say it except for he's fantastic the wonderful the magnificent the intransigent ed potastic if you could unmute yourself and bless us with some words we'd appreciate it oh man thank you for that rhyme man your words are mine thank you thank you so much for your time and but first happy birthday to you happy birthday to you Happy birthday, birthday to you, Megas. Happy, Happy birthday to you. Thank you, my brother, like no other, with words like thunder. All right. My name is Ed Potastico. Feeling fantastic. Please get a time to enjoy my rhyme for all sublime. I got two pieces, so you know what to rhyme. My first piece is called Karma's Tears. I'm still here where you left me, beaten and alone. I look the same, but my heart is black and stone. You pull me like a puppet with invisible strings. My deep open scars and wounds still sings. I hate you. No, I loathe you. No, I despise you with every fire of my soul. You turn my innocence into shadowy coal. Fuck you over again for everything you've done. I hope you feel the burn so a billion suns. The burning pain feels like walking barefoot in a river of snakes. The thought of it keeps my inner scars awake. All you say is sorry. Can you go back in time so you can redo your wrongs, return what is mine? My carefree hopes, sparkling dreams, and luminous days. Now... I'm colorblind with a permanent vision of gray. You had a crazy look in your eyes, but I paid no mind. I was so lost in the delusional fantasy. I didn't want to see the screaming signs. You bellowed, it wasn't you, but it was me. Here's a fact, even the blind admits they can't see. My bed feels like pins and needles that are slowly eating away. My body labeled being a fool in the deep dark cascades. I cursed you, but I want you to suffer more. I want someone or something to rip out your bloody core. I want justice from playing your melancholy and demented games. I just want redemption for the suffocating shame. You're just a vile, venomous memory inside of me. Hope karma's punishment can set you free. Thank you. And I got one more. This is called Anything My Mermaid. <clears throat> I sail the most furious tides, anything for a mermaid, oh, anything for a mermaid. I skin the most ugliest heights, anything for a mermaid. I even swim to the other side, anything for a mermaid, oh, anything for a mermaid. Riches and love I can provide, anything for a mermaid. I slay a monster 12 feet wide, anything for a mermaid. Oh, anything for a mermaid. I don't really care, I almost died, anything for a mermaid. I even toss away my pride, anything for a mermaid. Oh, anything for a mermaid. I even take salt in my eyes, anything for a mermaid. I even take everything in stride, anything for a mermaid, oh, anything for a mermaid. I even fight with both hands tied, anything for a mermaid. I even live my, with my heart tried, anything for a mermaid, oh, anything for a mermaid. I even get on the wild rise, anything for a mermaid. I even climb a steep landslide, anything for a mermaid, oh. Oh, anything for a mermaid. I even take her as my bride. Mermaid, where did you go? Oh, mermaid, where did you go? I said I love her, yet she didn't reply. Oh, where, oh, where, oh, where, oh, where, mermaid, where did you go? Thank you.
Yo, Eddie, thank you so much for that. Everyone, oh, me, you give it up for my brother, Ed Potastic. We need this on Spotify. <laughs> Hi, Andy, thank you for a mermaid. Yeah, that's going to be stuck in my head all week, one. man. You know, you fuck me up, man. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be stuck in my head. I love it. It's just fucking adorable, man. I yeah, know. All, all week, we're going to be walking around, Andy, thank you for a mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You just fun. you just did a musical brainworm into all of us, man. We're gonna be walking around singing about mermaids. And, uh, initiation. It's a w mermaid initiation. <laughs> right. And and so so my mermaid, when I, I I know a real life mermaid. Um every time they do poetry, it just I feel the salt come wash over me in the air. I'm going to be doing a poetry game with them coming up here September 21st. Uh, we're going to be introducing the Cyclops poem and the poetry game and another fun po poetry game that I haven't even turned, told Finn about. I told CP about the other night just because I was like buzzed up. And I was like, oh, I got to tell someone about it. What do you think about that second game we're going to do? Is this CP approved? Oh, you just muted yourself. You were unmuted. Now you just muted yourself. It's going to be super challenging. So yeah, it's gonna be like interactive, super challenging, energy bouncing off each other, you know, without yeah, yeah, without you know holding ourselves to this high standard. We're just gonna bounce energy off each other. I think it's gonna be super dope. Yeah. So Finn, there you go. That's the second one. But I, I you messaged me earlier. You want like a little brief two three sentence about what we're gonna do. So I'll I'll, I'll get you that soon. Um, but in the meantime, you're you're my mermaid. When I think mermaid. I think Finn Bell. So that song is gonna be going in my head. Anything for a mermaid, and and it's all about you, Finn. That's that you're my mermaid in my world. My wife loves you. I love you. Everyone here at Open Minds loves you. If you could unmute yourself and bless us with some words, we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much, Thomas. I would happily be yours and Catalyst Mermaid. Um, Catalyst and I can be the Nereids. We're combing our hair and sitting on the shore. <laughs> so thank you so much, um, Nicholas. It is so good to hear you. Thank you for your gorgeous feature. You filled my soul tonight because I haven't heard you lately and I miss you. Um, so don't be a stranger. At least read me some poetry once every month. That's my requirement from you. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna share two pieces. Um, the first one is called Cleaning the Bones Out, Nick Paleologos. I spent 12 hours of my life cleaning out the skeletons in my room. The closet was the last place I'd expect any clarity. Lots of memories here, lots of clothes that had fallen down. Disguises upon disguises of a former life, my room disappeared on me. I didn't recognize the glass floor I stood upon or the four walls which were preyed upon. Clothes, plastic wrapping, tossed to the side like memories of the past, buried in a trash compactor. A shoebox of X factors was thrown away. My past is my past, no matter the objects thrown away. That doesn't matter here. Not in that 12 hours I toiled up and down, stairwell after stairwell to throw it all away. A half court heave of dust balls vacuumed away, spiders left in dismay. All I wanted was a haven to call my own, to unload my troubles when I am all alone. I didn't have this for years. I organized and sorted out the bullshit. A real change has happened today. I cleaned my room. I know it might not be a huge difference in your life, it made the world to me. I kicked my depression out for a day to clean it up. Go on and call me dirty. I resurrected myself above the glass which I stood upon. 
molded a new floor of wood and carpet with dressers to store my gear and books, tore down the bones of my walls, fed the very ravenous decor with liberation. For in that moment, I felt like me, the one I have been waiting for since I was 14. Thank you so much for that, Nick. Needed that. Yeah. Needed that. That's so dope, man. I'm still gonna write a poem because I want you to read one of mine too. So I'm gonna write a poem specifically for you to read. I would, I would love that. Um, do you have another one for us? We'd love to hear it. Um, this is an older one. Some of you may have heard this one before. It's called "Where Truth Coats the Diaphragm, the Lips, the Ear." Apology on my lips is the first air pushed out. Please understand it is weary, not confronting, not aggrieved. I will bother you to take time and hear. Listen to these words, open up my lips. Even against my will, they disperse. A thousand spores airborne, touching and tickling noses. <sighs> inhaled deeply. I want you to know them. Commit them to memory as they are right now, before they become someone else's to digest, regurgitate, a chemical reaction in the transformation of their worth, their meaning, the moment they force their way up the windpipe, gagging the throat to hasten release on their way rising. I have learned the truth becomes only what is revealed first. Bold face captions, never what is unspoken, never what is waiting politely for its turn to speak out. I have learned the truth screams the loudest. It is never the quiet that is a burden kept in closed circles, passed around, whipped up to a dizzying speed, crashing back down. The weight a yoke of opinion forged in judgment made culpable. So at the end, everyone's shoulders give up the fight, gradually sag. I have learned the truth is delectable. Court's scandal lingers and hugs the mouth ready to fizz and spit. No wonder at all that no one wants to hear the unpopular version. No one wants the residual grit, the boredom, the damning facts that gather and perish at the bottom. I have learned in all this while, waiting, waiting, that the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth has escaped someone, anyone, catch it. Everyone playing at volunteering, but no one cares to rise up see what lines the edge of the cold metallic bone, move the laundered fluff aside to crane their necks and peer above the comfort of their perceptions. Assumption is the best weighted blanket. I heard a rumor. There is a damning photo floating around, words disparate litter the cutting room floor, a call that could have happened but didn't. Did I miss anything in the frantic retelling? Why do you look at me askance? Why, was there more? I heard a rumor. They believed everything they first imagined. They swore in their minds you promised something. Said you, you led them behind you knowing. I am barely able to balance on the same cliff. See, I too plunged to follow. See, I too joined the adoring queue. I heard a rumor. They fell hard for you. You reciprocated in kind. I loved you. I adored you. You stumbled. I stayed. I fought. You still ran scared. I have learned the truth. Untended forms irrevocable fades to corners of bronchial to expire. A delusion of grace overwhelms the lungs corridors. Unminded, it gushes back up. Thank you. Finn, absolutely amazing. Quickly, I just want to remind you guys that if you want more Finn, um, 
Then it's going to be performing as the feature next Friday. I'm super excited about that. She's going to be um, coming and bringing it, man. Y'all, y'all got to come through and see Finn. She's been doing so much for the poetry world for so long. And I remember in a workshop, because uh, I've just been doing this for a year. It's actually our first year anniversary. And Nick got to do the anniversary show. So that's cool, man. Um, and yeah, and so we got Finn next year, and I remember being in a workshop with her, and, and, and she'd been at this for a long time, and I was, I started the workshop at the time we wanted to do, you know, podcasts, and, all that, and she was like, I am handing the crown to you, Tom, like, you need to continue this work, I am tired, I do so much, we need more people like you, here you go, like, here's the, the, you know, take the reins, take the crown, go on with it. So starting that, we got Finn featuring uh, next week, next Friday. And then on sep uh, September 21st, I will be doing my first workshop for the Finn Cabulary series, Poetry Games with Finn Cabulary. Um, we're going to be doing the Cyclops poem. We're going to be doing a secret style of poem that me, CP, and my wife only know about. Finn don't even know yet, so it's going to be a surprise for her, and she's going to get involved too. Um, so yeah, it's going to be very fun. Um, y'all make sure you tune in with that said, everybody um, you and give it up for the incredible Finn. Yeah. Hey. That was wonderful. Oh. Always hey. don't have strong, strong. Ooh. Brilliant read. Incredible. Yeah. Read. Yeah. I love you. That was awesome. Awesome. truth. That's so cool. I'm so glad that you chose to do it, Nick. Peace tonight, too. Uh, I've seen he looked like a little kid Christmas morning here, and that those words come out of your mouth, man. I watched, I watched him. He just, he got so giddy. And like I said, I want to write a piece for you to read that I don't even read. Like I just want to write a piece for you to read, you know, and and write it with that in mind too that you'll you'll be reading it, because just your voice is is like the ocean like i could smell the salt ask my mom you know i grew up in south florida man the ocean 10 minutes from me you know on a good morning you can even smell the beach from you know where we live i can drive 10 minutes to get there now i'm landlocked in central alberta with mountains on one side and prairies on the other and so just hearing your voice just brings me you know makes me feel whole again and i really appreciate that Lacan, thank you so much for coming out this morning and sharing with us. I'm so glad you came through. I hope to see you here more, brother. We love you. Um, have a great day at work, man. We we hope this, you know, all this energy, man, got you pumped, ready ready to tear the day up, yo. So um, have a wonderful night. We love you. Come back, please. And Squigs never shut up. I know we messaged him, but, you know, we'll see Squigs again when we see him. And we love the whole PGN family. Thank you so much, Finn, for that beautiful piece. I'm, I'm looking forward to your feature next week. But we're going to keep the show rolling because we got quite a few people uh, coming up here. And then we still want to hear more from the man himself, Nick, right? So uh, I'm going to start this off by just saying y'all need to click on that link and hit follow if you aren't all the, already following Prince P releases content daily almost just I, I love his style of poetry and 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 the command and and the emotion behind it and Prince P if, if you could just bless us with some words we would appreciate it click that link follow him yeah I would be reading two poems. The first poem we call Hip Hop. Hip Hop started as scraps from sniffing apart from jazz rock. It made, this mode of transportation grew into an empire. Grown legs and, and, cross, and crossing borders in all forms, like imps, it's the ruler of the world. A global phenomenon, indeed. Words tightly compacted, like tuna in a can, say many from the can, so eloquently spoken by brilliant minds. This isn't the terminus. Nothing could determine this. Deter, deter, nothing could, nothing could, de, nothing could deter, deter this journey that hip hop took. Can't forget the past, because without it, it's 
without it, you're nothing. Hip hop, you're our blessing to do the masses. That's the first poem. Yo, I love that. What for as a hip hop lover, like what that poem was dope. And the second one, I'll read the second one is not titled yet. Magic is, is magic isn't real unless you pay attention. Listen with your third eye. You are you see a pocket of blaring light, pay attention. The light is searing and trying to tell you something. It, it is, it had been summoned, the light that is, like a, like, like a hand to a trigger something, it's triggering the trigger to be used. Maybe it's a feeling, maybe it's a, a sensation. No, it's both. How does the light cope with the something? Maybe a dink, maybe a dink, it reacts, or a dink, it retracts. Both because they are the same. Poem. Yo, Prince P, do me a favor. Read the beginning of that poem again, because those are some of the greatest lines that I think I ever heard, really. Magic isn't real unless you pay attention. Listen. Right there. It's just that line right there. Magic isn't real unless you pay attention. Like, yo. Everybody, do me a favor. Unmute yourself and give all the love you have to Prince P. You have such a good Prince P. Prince P. Yes. And how true. Yes. Yeah. 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 Unless I grab the next, yeah. Follow, listen, wisdom right there coming from that, man. Like, yo, y'all need to follow up. Like, it's beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff. Um, Thank you so much, man, for coming through week in and week out. You know we love you. You part of the Open Minds fam. Uh, coming up next, so we have a new, well, I wouldn't say new. She been here ever since. She got stuck here the first time. I, I find that's a... Um, a running theme. It's like you guys show up and then, you know, we all just, lo you know, we love each other and we stick together. Um, I have a secret to tell you, Debbie. My wife wants to, when we get our RV and we start traveling around, my wife would like to go to your house and adopt you as her grandmother. I would be honored. Yeah. I would. I think I have to be an auntie, though. Well, you guys are an like auntie? 40. You guys are 40. No, she's young. No, she's young. Oh, okay. She's, yeah, she's younger than me. That's uh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, auntie, right she said she don't care what you call yourself. Auntie, grandma, whatever. She just, yeah, she, she wants you in the fam. Oh. I'd like to see what you guys think of the Bay Area. You'll bring some beauty to it, for sure. Oh, we're definitely bringing art and beauty and poetry and love. So, yeah, it'll be great. But, yeah, if you could uh, bless us with some words, we would appreciate that. Oh, I just feel so emotional today. This whole show has just been emotional. But since I did mention being um, arrested development at the age of 14, I'm reading a couple poems that reflect on that. This is a sonnet. These bitches. I pushed you down in front of Taco Bell. You stole some bracelets from our friends and me. You shouldn't have. A tight knit click were we. Our freshman year spun into a hell. My shame and guilt from it. In this poem, I'll tell. Our gang of four hanging together would never be a thing we'll do again. Shelly, Tori, you and me. Psychedelic nights and magical spells. Matching jackets we wore were easily rent. This path of mean girl, I hadn't meant to travel. It was a front to cover my insecurity. Anita, just a deplorable fucked up sham. That nightmare of a ninth grade year would end, but you, who I loved, turns nemesis and former friend. By the way, Anita and I have made peace and we are very good friends now in our 60s. 
And here's another one that uh, has Anita in it. How we grew up too fast. Walking up Calusa from kindergarten, holding my tempera painting, primary colors on newsprint, almost as big as me, flying it like a flag in knee socks, saddle shoes, waiting for the big boys, crossing guards, wear primary colors, sweaters look itchy, caps look like ones they give kids free at McDonald's or ones folded from newsprint. Only 10 years after, I went to my first open casket funeral. Benny took Brenda on back of his bike to Santa Cruz boardwalk. Problem was his bike, a 90, a tiny dirt bike, not enough speed for highway riding. They got creamed by a semi. So young, so dumb. Yeah, and crossing Calusa, I'm a high school freshman in a black velvet blazer, blue denim, brown leather, going to a dark bridge to hang out in a dark park at night. Stopping and talking to Earl, friendly liquor, liquor store, uniformed guard. Sometimes adults bought booze for you. Sometimes you would just get a joint laced with angel dust from Earl, the tall security guard. That year, I went to my first open casket funeral. Benny's bike was a 90, a tiny dirt bike, not enough power for highways, so young, so dumb. We were all so young and dumb, only 14, 15, 10 years out from kindergarten, scoring PCP from a security guard, taking a 90 on a highway. I can't forget his brother's grief, darkness, darkness. Seeing Ted and Andy hold him up, his terminal crack up happened at that mortuary on Grove Street. That and Anita placing the ring Benny gave her into the open casket along with Benny for Benny's final ride to the graveside service. Because Anita and Benny were going together and Benny was a handsome player who took Brenda with him to their deaths on Highway 17. Infidelity with a side of mortality, 10 years out from kindergarten. Thank you guys. Whew. Rest <laughs> peace um, to everyone who we have lost. That was a very beautiful piece. Um, Debbie, thank you so much for coming back time and time again. Um, I really hope to see you every Friday. Like I said, my my wife wants you, you to be a doctor in some way, whether grandma, sister, auntie, cousin, however we can get you in the family. We need you in the family. Everyone, if you could do Consider me a favor. Done. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, if you could do me a favor, unmute and give it up for the beautiful Debbie Steele. <laughs> Was amazing. Um, I wanted to mention, Ed, did you know that there is a literary I'm magazine good. dedicated to Taco Bell poetry? I'm so going to write a Taco Bell poem now. That you Are you pulling my leg? There is. Ed, like, if, you, if, if you've never submitted that poem anywhere before, I suggest Taco Bell. It's Taco Bell Quarterly. Uh, that's what it's called. And uh, it's, Write it you know. <laughs> down, it, get that submitted. It's going to be in Taco Bell qu Quarterly. Make sure y'all pick up the issue of Taco Bell qu Quarterly with Debbie in it. You know what I'm saying? And tacos. <laughs> it's just yeah. everything in Taco Bell. That's what it is. It's like the universe. It's for the God. Two chalupas. I want I'll... two chalupas. <laughs> I got a, I got a few funny Taco Bell stories. but Write them. Gotta... They want to hear the fiction, <laughs> the poetry, all of it. Oh, bet. All right, but we got a, we still got a, quite a few people because people showing up, you know, and showing love. But we still want to hear more from the man of the night, Nick Paleo Logo. So we're gonna get through this list. Coming up next, we have a very special poet. Some of y'all may know, but I've never heard this poet before. It's the first time at Open Minds Open Mic, Kiana the artist. If we can all unmute, give a big open mind, open arm, open heart. Welcome to Kiana the Artist. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. Hello. Welcome. I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hey, Nick, how you doing? Okay. Uh, I know it's like almost 
really, really night time over here. So here we go. <laughs> so I got two for you. All right, here it goes. Journey. This road is called journey as we take this long walk. This journey may seem long. Hey, journey, which way to go? Which way to turn? Hey, journey, there's something up the road. Why do I have to take these things off? Oh, journey, the burdens are heavy. Oh, journey, I have to take God with me. He's the light of the path. Oh, journey, I walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, journey, that's the beginning and the end. Oh, journey is a new start, a new destiny, new people. I am this journey that's called life. So I have to do that one because some of these people on here, I don't know. Some Yo, this is the first people. time I've ever heard you and Kiana. Wow, that was, I love that. So journey. Y'all love that line. I walk by faith, not by sight. Yes. Oh, journey. Like, thank you so much for showing. Who, uh, how'd you find us? Was it through, through Nick? D. Allen. Oh, D. Allen. Yeah. Oh, D. That's my, my boy right there, man. And my other oh. people, too, that uh, they know me out there. So, and hello to the new people. So, well, this listen, is my it's, first it's time a here. blessing meeting you. Thank you so much <laughs> for showing up. And I'm ready thank for you. some more. All right. Here go my other one. K E Y A N A T H E A S A T, Kiana the Artist. I'll go around the world to tell my story to every girl, to every boy, for every woman, to every man. I'll go around the world to tell my story all in one. The attitude of character to visible character to visible love to unspoken word. I'm the artist. I'm the artist. He believe in God, believe also in me. I'm a woman, I'm a woman. I'm a woman with faith, with God, with minds to me, with arms in place to never suggestify what you can become. Every day is a new day. Every day is a bright and sunny day. I tend to need my friends to become even more. My deepest prayer is to believe in yourself, to judge me because I am black. This moment of speech, now walk in my shoes, now walk in my shoes, now walk in my shoes. My naysayers can't say what to say about you because I am somebody, because I am somebody. To the natural hair, to the natural eyes, look at me. I'm natural. This says, is you. Is this mic on? Can I have your attention, please? Words and words are dreams, reality. So I am here because I'm the next generation. Yo, thank you so much for showing up tonight. I hope you come back every Friday that night. Come G, back. my it's boy. My first hey. time, so I was yeah, like, thank oh you. God. Yeah, what time it, well, and, you know, he told me the time, you know, I'm on Eastern time zone. So it's so just, you Eastern. It's so, time. so we start at 7 PM Eastern. If you, I, I open the zoom room 10 minutes before, and I, we get five open micers, a feature, and then the rest of the open mic list. So if you show up at like, you know, uh, 650, 655, you'll get the read before the feature. I know you sent me a message. You're like, it's getting late. Like I can't go last. You're yeah. Late. So, yeah. I hate my calls, and so, well, here at Open Minds, too, we're open. We flexible. You know what I'm saying? We, us okay. as poets, like, we know, like, hey, if I got to shift a few people, like, you you down to stay another five minutes? Okay. Well, let's put them up in front. You know, we, we worry with it. But, yeah, yeah. I, I can move I'll you in the early spots. We come next um, time. It'd be great. Early. We got Finn Bell next week. So, yeah. Uh, you you got to be cool. here. And I want to hear you. more of what and you happy got. Birthday that was dope. To all the happy birthday, people. So, happy birthday. Uh, thank you so much for showing up, everybody. If if y'all can unmute one more time and give Kiana a big welcome, and and you know, one of us, one of one of us, one of <laughs> us. Now you're stuck. Yeah, here. welcome, Kiana. Thank you, thank you, thank you for letting me come to y'all guys over mic. This is my first time, so thank you. Great Appreciate first performance. You. Yeah, amazing. Ah. Oh. You got to come back, please. So uh, coming up next, uh, y'all y'all kind of heard him. If, if y'all was there in that, that little intro video that we cut up for Megas for his birthday there, you know. Uh, see, see his background there, Emotional Defibrillator. Y'all need to buy that book. Daniel, if you get a moment after or before you spit or while I'm introing you, if you could post a link to buy that book right there because 
car payments behind. He's young. He's got a girlfriend and a job. And, you know, like, we got to buy this young man's book because he's doing so good at his age. I always call it hashtag bars, bars, bars. This man got the flow that keeps going. He used to go as EPOV which I'll let him tell you what EPOV means and then go into his uh, poem. So, Daniel, if you could bless us with some words, brother, I greatly appreciate it. And thanks for that video collab we did for Gustav today, man. That was cool. Sure, that was awesome. The collab I had a blast with, so it was well-deserved and just had to be put out there. For As for EPOV, it's a name, hopefully, if I do end up becoming famous, it would stand for everyone's point of view, which goes for my style of writing. But today, um, I will actually perform one piece. It's a little longer than my normal ones, so I'll just perform one. But uh, since everyone is touching on the personal side, I will put a personal poem as well. So this is a new one that I've written, but just haven't said it to anyone. And um, it's called, I Don't Blame You. I don't blame you. That's it. The rope has been cut and ignored. I tried to lend a hand, but you never wanted my support. My presence to you is more trivial than it was a reward. My heart listened as it was being torched. Sorry for those petty mistakes, the ones we argued over as it became late. For the days I'm exhausted, I just happen to stay awake. You can never sleep in the middle of a debate. I don't blame you, and I'll explain why. Love is a two-way street. You're just oblivious on your side. If only you can be in my shoes and watch from my eyes, my actions would make sense and there would be no surprise. You're a wonderful person with a heart that's candid, always healing the person that my blunder damaged, looking for the quality in the pool of disadvantages, throwing optimism to see if it establishes. I did my part to support and defend. You helped me survive while life was getting intense, chipped in when I couldn't handle the expense. If patience was taken care of, our bond would have never ended. Hopefully I'm making sense and that you can understand it. It's like, I don't want to leave, but I have to enlist. Everything was perfect until arguments had me convinced. We put trust in our love, but the future we can never predict. I'm not an easy person to live with, so feel free to gloat. I write in the moment, which can grab ambience by the throat. Some thoughts hit and ideas roam. It's idiotic not to make a note. Regardless of what the future holds, you're the one person I love the most. You're like a cardiac muscle because you never get tired. You had me by the nuts with a pair of pliers. If our relationship was a modified civic, it would misfire. But that's what happens when you're gambling with desire. Your words can stab my ego when it's it's a shame when it does. I digest the bullets of hatred with the help of drugs. Maybe it's my serenity talking when I'm madly in love. I'm a peaceful man who cherishes a lover's hug. I'm boring and just not your type. You become blasé over things that I like. So controversial, develop a website. I become the person you despise the moment I want to write. The more you ignore the person you like, the more you will grow fond of them. Strange how that works. Of course, it all starts as friends. I was obsessed and couldn't let go of my perpetual pen. I was happy, but still trying to process what the unfortunate things meant. I love your taste and style, which makes me look dapper. My mentality is more sympathetic, as for me, it doesn't matter. I relish the atmosphere while together in the shower. Buying gifts became projects since you disapprove a cliche flower. I don't blame you, but you left me in a predicament. Scrabble my happiness has me acting so different maybe it's the excitement that vanished so we held on to what's intimate there's only so much we can do considering we're immigrants why start a war if you know you can't win a ruthless fight that doesn't seem to make you flinch i appreciate the simple things since it helps strengthen the bridge touching your thigh as i find something to binge i have my moments i'm no saint i'm in poverty and that fact alone i wish to erase maybe god has a plan but then had me misplaced if only i can meet him so that we can negotiate sometimes you miss the memories and not the person we drifted apart but don't let the experience become a burden but how things are headed the results are beyond certain our conversations will be in a graveyard for no one to listen our breath started fighting and it generated carbon monoxide anger boiled the surface so it's not worth it to reply maybe it's a battle between opinion and pride writing this poem to spare my heart from your goodbye stress was on the rise so i figured it was tocophobia manipulating your thoughts and your marvelous persona trying to play it safe to avoid dealing with karma. Living was full of surprises like a week in Barcelona. You were my fiance, but money became an issue. Bills and debt threw a party and my problems just grew. I was in a dark place and unable to subdue. I was my own enemy and sadly ignored you. 
I lost my grip in life and that became a concern. My paycheck vanished, so there was nothing that was earned. We could never go out, so wrangling emerged. Bank statements were checked. Bank statements were checked and struggling was confirmed. I would save two months and book a table for a restaurant she observed. I squeezed myself like a sponge in order to reserve. My mistakes were paying itself, but no lessons were learned. I hit rock bottom and the come up seems absurd. It seems so out of reach that I wondered if it's what I deserve. I just want you happy, but it's whatever you prefer. I chase my dream and that pushes us away. Poetry isn't your thing, but you still managed to stay. I wrote, you want me to stop so that my point could be made. I through my soul in that poem and thought everything was displayed. Looking into each other's eyes can make strangers fall in love. Our memories are diamonds because it's still beautiful when crushed. Even when it's burning, I can't resist the urge to touch. If there's ash, I'd be the one trying to collect the dust. I'm not as strong mentally as I am physically. Stress and proximity and lacking the ability to torture my dignity while juggling responsibilities. Living in a cramped citizen cramped city as I hallucinate on creativity. Your heart is transparent so I can see right through. A phenomenal woman who always has something to pursue. It's a shame I drowned in what I thought was the truth. We can fight for a century, but in the end, I don't blame you. Thank you. Yo, Daniel, make sure y'all buy that man's book. Bars on bars. Finn is out of here. We love you, Finn. Y'all come by the next Friday. Finn's gonna be doing a feature for us. So excited for that. Um, yeah, we love you. Buy the book. Everyone unmute. Give Daniel a big thing. Daniel like Finn Bell. We're gonna keep the show going. That was awesome, Daniel. Wait, are you in Jersey? Yeah, I am in Jersey, actually. <laughs> Y'all <laughs> boys need to link up. What? Where in Jersey? Y'all yeah. need to. Where, 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 where? Are you? Are you in Central, uh, North, Newark. or South? Newark. So North. Oh, dude, you're like 15 minutes. From me. That's all. Awesome. Oh, y'all need to link up, man. <laughs> Actually, hey, there's a, an up. event that Paul Queso has. Or Paul oh, Queso. I know that. That's yeah, on. Paul. Yeah, on, on Wednesday. I actually might try to join in. It's the City Lounge. You talking about? In Newark. He has a an event that he's hosting, an open mic, I believe, this coming Wednesday. Is, in is, Newark. Is, is it at the City Lounge? That's what it's called. Yes, actually, yeah. I, I know, I know that venue. I know that venue. I went there Yo, I, I, once or twice. I know I've that never venue. Been there. Nick, go yeah, there so you can meet Daniel. Wait, 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 are you going this Make Wednesday? Make him feel comfortable for his first time. Yeah, you know, I think he's hosting it this coming Wednesday. This so coming I'm gonna Wednesday? try to, yeah. All right, I'm gonna drop my info in the chat. We'll link up and everything. We'll try to figure out a way to like, you know, because like, I, if it's Newark, I'm gonna definitely Uber there mm -hmm. because the fact that like parking in Newark is fucking terrible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just get dropped off and then. Yeah, just yeah. dropped off there. You good? You good? Yeah. But yeah, oh, that's so cool, man. Yeah, that's cool, man. Hey, I hope y'all uh, link up and all that. Um, yo, so far tonight we've had two new folk. Uh, we got Dre over here chilling with Kate, right? Yo, it's Kate's homie. We know hey. it's gonna be good, right? Um, so yeah, if everyone could just unmute themselves for a moment and give a big open mind, open heart, open arm welcome to Dre. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Um, hey. Hello. So yeah. Hey. So this is yeah, as mentioned earlier, this is my first time here. And um how how much time do I have? I mean, I got like relatively short poems. Is that like okay to do two, maybe? Yeah, if you got really I mean, you got about like five minutes or so, six minutes. Like we I try not to limit the artists, right? But you know, cause we're all hanging out. But you know, there's oh, just yeah. a couple people left here for the night, and I think we're all having a good time, and we're gonna get a little, uh, you know, you, you got about five minutes, six minutes if you push. Okay, I, I can work with however, that. However, however much you feel that you need to express yourself to us, it's your first time here. If okay. you, if you know what I'm saying, show us who you are. Welcome to the fam. All right, here we go. Yeah. I'm gonna start with some original stuff here. Well, yeah, this is like, this is like the poem that got me back into writing. Um, after like a four year hiatus. It's called um, Digging for Fire. <clears throat> These callous bloodied hands are aching from the endless digging of the earth. The tools given to me have proven to be faulty for they disintegrated over time. Alas, here I am on my knees digging for fire. Being passionate for passion, I know wholeheartedly that despite the struggles, despite the self-doubt, despite forces out of my control, I just have to keep digging. 
dig, dig, dig. That's all my body knows from my head down to my toes. Dig, dig, dig. It's my only desire at this point to dig for fire. Burying deeper underground, I see corpses of love's past decaying in rapid secession, screaming in disintegration, spouring out fear in intoxicating haze, sh sending shivers and spasms like electric fire running through my veins, suffocating me with a stranglehold of toxicity and scar tissue. Yet, despite the struggles, despite the self-doubts, despite forces beyond my control, I keep digging. Senses failing, pain being numbed by pain, questioning my motives with each passing moment. I keep digging. This is all I know now. Just don't know how long I can go until I fly too close to the sun. Johnny Cash's fabled thing of, uh, excuse me, Johnny Cash's fabled ring of fire begins to appear after what has felt like four years. The earth increasing in temperature with every scoop of soil, blood, sweat, and tears. I finally get a chance to peer through a small hole that revealed itself with a hot blinding light. What has, what I has, excuse me, um, what I've met with was with a pair of eyes, excuse me, a pair of kaleidoscope eyes. Sorry, I totally butchered that. A smile that re, re excuse me, re ign uh, God, sorry. <laughs> re ignited embers, there we go, that have been extinguished long ago. A face that launched a thousand ships in my heart and soul. Before I can scrape more of the Earth's surface, I am swallowed and engulfed, engulfed by its light taking me under through the ring of fire. Free falling further and further, dodging great balls of fire, I fall into the arms that belongs to the face that was seen. And just like that, the heat was tolerable, dare I say comfortable, in her arms. I close my eyes, whispering as I fade away, thank you, universe. That's that one. Holy yeah. fuck! Yeah, hold up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before you fucking uh, go on to the next one, I'm so I just like I replied it. I'm so glad that you wrote that and it pulled you back into poetry, because that <laughs> it was amazing and it was uh, it's like you had this poetry, but because because you did write before, but you stopped right, and it's like this this poem was just boiling in you, you know. And then you're able to get it out. And like, I'm so excited to hear uh, what you got next first and what you continue to do. And I hope that we inspire you to stay writing, to stay, you know, just doing doing what we all love, which is poetry. So if you could bless us with some more words, I would appreciate it. Man. All right, cool. Um, let's see here. Um, this is going to be a fun pick here. I'm going to do um, one about social anxiety. It's called To My Future Lover. I, sincere, me, I sincerely apologize ahead of time if I am not what you expect or if I am too quiet or awkward. At times, trying to make meaningful relationships for, with people is like trying to squeeze blood from a stone. In the little time that we may have known each other, our interactions may have been fun, quirky, engaging, maybe deep. But deep down, there are a thousand clowns jammed inside a heart-shaped car, weeping loudly with rainbow-painted tears dripping, splattering, and echoing throughout the hauled-out core of my being, all while lightning is slashing through the superstorm in my brain, and the nerves quake violently like a million maracas strung together by live wire. With that said, I hope you can be patient with someone who needs as much reassurance as I do. My paranoia is accidentally saying or doing the wrong thing will set off an avalanche of suffocating doubt and fear that will leave me frozen solid. 
I constantly worry about making you uncomfortable and me coming off too strong. When it comes down to, when it comes to reading vibes, I am illiterate as fuck, unless we're talking about uncomfortability or sadness. I read it on my face every time I look in the mirror. There are times in which I try to change my appearance to feel more comfortable in my own skin, although it's nearly impossible to feel comfortable in your own skin if you're anything but white in America. Sometimes I wear my name in shame because nobody that I know except my family can pronounce my first name correctly, dating back to childhood and having been made fun for not having a normal name. I just figured to make things simple for everyone with just three letters, D-R-E. Maybe I might get some more job opportunities. Although I am working with the flaws of my attention and retention, I fear it may be a problem to you as much as it has been with my last lover. If I had a dime for every time I accidentally spaced it in conversation and got cussed out for it, wow, I think I could probably retire happily. After all that has been said, I hope I didn't just scare you off because you seem to be a wonderful serving of cool beans, chilling in some awesome sauce. And going out for a quick bite of food sounds like music to my ears right about now. Are you hungry? Do you want to go out for some food together? And that's that one. Yo, so I just simplified it to D-R-E. And brother, welcome to Open Minds. We love you. We love everything about you, everyone Unmute yourself and give a big shout out, all the love, and welcome to Dre. Woo! That was great, Dre. Amazing. Woo! Nice okay. to meet you, Dre. That was awesome. I am hungry. Welcome, Dre. You're one of us. One of, one us. of us. One, one of, of us. us. <laughs> hey, Dre, if you got Instagram or something, drop drop it down in the channel. If not, I will message Kate and be like you need to send me his email his phone number Ooh. all this because we because we getting him back here every friday because we want more dre it was dope maybe coming into the next year we'll feature you you know you got all this new poetry started writing again i know you want to show it off and we would love to to hear it there you go Look, at dre ray 90 dre ray 90 there you go yeah and, and make sure y'all following cp if you're not um, we're gonna keep this thing rolling. We got just a couple people left, so um, yeah, uh, Kitsay, thanks for bringing him. That was dope. You're dope. My wife and I just absolutely love you. Everyone at Open Minds loves you. I know you're forgetful, you're ADHD like me, and just oh, what Friday? Oh, oh, crap, I got somewhere to be, and then you really, but I'm so glad no, you made it. To drive up here. Oh, that's right, you was, I was, yeah, I was coming from work. Okay. No. Yeah. I thought most of the time you do the show from the phone too and you're watching and you're like, okay, I'm home now. I can spit. Like, what's up? Like, no, anyway. no. I'm at his house. I went up to Manchester. Oh. Yeah. Manchester. I bet. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <so, laughs> All right. If you could bless us with some words, we would appreciate it. Sometimes. Oh, sorry. Can I do two short ones? Wicked short. All right. Sometimes. I wish that life would give me a break. But then I realized that's a mistake because I would be dead. Life doesn't stop no matter how much you beg. You can find solace and good friends who uplift you when times get rough and help you move forward when you feel stuck. Cosmic signals sent to me from above, signs that I'm watched over, protected and loved through symbolism and synchronicities that find me in ways that aren't too obvious unless you can see with an open mind. And I do each and every time. I see deeper meanings behind reasoning and how everything happens to benefit me. When I lose, I still win. Whether it's a blessing in disguise or a lesson, I still win. It's the end of the first one. 
Hey, that was dope. And I love the open mind mm -hmm. shout out. We love you, Kate. Oh. Thank you. All right. My next one is also short. All right. Spirit, please continue to shed your wisdom down on me. Continue to keep me safe on my journey. Walk alongside me and show me the endless opportunities helping me guiding me you're always with me you partly are me and also something godly a mystery i'd love to unfold but i'd probably be scared if you appeared before me since i'd suddenly be exposed though you already know everything about me my shame pride tears joy flaws and scars and the way they peeled into now faint marks A reminder that they still happen, but also the beauty and how I was able to mend the wounds, how I dressed them up and my body revived itself. The permanence of memory with physical evidence and how I overcame. Thank you for having me. Kate, I love that piece. I know there's quite a few people in this room and in this room that I'm in now um, that have scars all up and down their arms. And, you know, sometimes pain needs to be healed with pain. But I'm glad. That I actually got didn't scratched stick. by a dog with long nails. Oh, is that what you told him at the hospital? OK, but hey, we still love you anyways. I was like 13. <laughs> Bet, bet. Uh, thank you so much. Everybody, oh, mute yourself and give it up for Kate. And thank her for bringing Dre in here. Like, Kate, hey. yeah. Thank you, Kate, for coming. Right on. Nice to meet you, Kate. Awesome stuff. Teach one, teach one. Good shit. Yeah, man. So dope. Um, so, Frog. <laughs> this is what we decided earlier. So I think you were there. You understand that I asked Paul Skiff if I can, uh, you know, somehow talk you into doing a collab. Because you and Skiff, uh, like the way your delivery is, and like y'all would just, even if Skiff busts out some tonal and you bring that voice and everything, and Skiff goes, okay, I'll do that only if you join in on the collab. And I was like, okay, let me think about that, right? And then I'm thinking, well, I got if, you know, then. So CP was just feeling on Skiff, man. And I was like, you know what? Okay, I'll do the collab if CP Mays does it with us. And CP Mays agreed. And so Frog, Skiff, CP, and myself are going to do a collab. So I'm going to call you in. We're going to get on some Skype thing. We're going to kick around ideas. We got this. This is going to be dope, bro. Our four energies. I love it. Frog, if you could unmute yourself and bless us with some word, brother, I would appreciate it. I've seen darkness worn on the faces of friends, family, and strangers, smeared as war paint, their actions carved into flesh. I've seen every possible lashing of verbality, physical, emotional, and unconditional in vengeance through observant eyes upon me and upon the world, from the same flesh we were created from in disgust. Most believe their lives are right and all is wrong, but they're the ones with the most devious intent, the most selfish absorbance of their own personal vanity, aggression, and greed. Most of us live in glass houses throwing objects or hang ourselves from lighthouses to finish what others have started, sending up smoke signals in distress, throwing the most obligatory vocabulary at people because of what we've been through, what we've known, and what we continue to take with us without ever dropping our guard nor changing our monster. I've seen the darkest slums, the dangerous travels, walked the violent streets of major cities and witnessed firsthand the raunchiest tenures of living in this land while endangering myself, getting dragged by friends into another Scooby-Doo mystery of if we'll wake up tomorrow being surrounded by foreign faces again. I've met broken people, thus more broken than I, the sick, the afflicted, 
the ones who wear masks of deceit and darkness upon them for the world spat them out without a chance, transforming the monsters pushed onto them throughout life. I've seen bloody floors, bloody flesh, and bloody fights, screams that can travel throughout the days with hate and discrepancy and complete strangers within our own personal circles as doors slammed and the loved ones we know storm away. I've seen camaraderie, companionship, good within common people, along with the gift of giving, while still struggling with common law, which makes me second guess my thoughts at times or delivers a more hardened fact to their basis. I felt the pain, the sadness of the ones I love the most, even in strangers, always pondering my mind on them daily, wearing with love and devotion once. Though I continue through struggle, to dream you all up beside me, visioning myself dead just for the chance to watch all over you with the protection since I cannot be with you in the constants you imagine, even in that vast unknown of darkness and depression. <laughs> My protection for you is debatable after the journey and living. So, as the stale leaves lay frozen, trees crack in age, and as the hard ground beats against our feet, one must see it all with ends within an instant. We must evolve a wretched mind into the becoming of knowledge to light within ourselves a vigil of grace. The earth's peace only lasts before we're lost in our might. The dawn where the lawns were damp and vacant with distant screamers and the chatter of dogs badgering late night sleepers in backyards. I could hear the train engine calling me. It's carts egging me on to them to jump in and ride to wherever it takes me and to never look back upon a city that stayed steadily bustling about in its own agenda and its people who laid sleeping under rain-weathered roofs, its patrons and bars slurring over this week's story of some predisposition of some verbal quarrel with another hapless chap while screaming for refills and eyeballing the door to the piss-covered floor in the chip-painted bathroom a place where no one flushes a toilet, the sink water runs, the paper towel's always out and soap is always empty, sharpies are stenciled and gratuitous remarks on the walls and these people never leave. It's like a time capsule wrapping its arms around the animal in its natural habitat, vermin who never escape the confines of neon beer commercials constantly flickering and sports glaring on the old TVs in a daze too heavy to loot. The toilet paper is always wet with some foreign liquid too vile to even question its chemical property. The seats are condensed in urine puddles like a congregation of disease. Welcome to Louisville, where homes have walls punched in, bricks go missing outside, and bullet holes riddle the fucking window panes. As doors are jammed and doorknobs are fucking faulty. If you listen carefully in the silent mornings, you can hear the sound of the earth slightly rumble as though all of the electrical generators the earth has are humming. The drags of air from busy streets that stretch by in the distance. The sound hums and rumbles in a light buzz, powering up air conditioners as the morning birds chirp and fly, and you hear the echoes of tracked tires roll across the city about a half mile away. I guess the feeling's peace, but I don't know what the fuck I'm getting into anymore. Thank you. Yo, and that's that's why I want this man to um, help mentor me and train me because yeah. his vocabulary yeah. and grasp of literature forms is just yeah. amazing. We love and appreciate you so much, Frog Corpse. And I hope um, you have to answer us now that you agree. Skiff you cp and myself on a collab everyone here wants to hear it are you down i am down bet all right i'm gonna be reaching out to all y'all we're gonna set up a skype meeting like this we're gonna come up with a concept we're gonna write it and the way my uh you know catalyst always got the best ideas right my wife and, and she says um y'all should do it like as a symphony almost overlaying you know like have Skiff coming in with some tonal stuff and have a frog on top of that and then like break that beat with like CP on some intensity and then I'll come in with some twisted to tie it all together and like 
do like just this like overlaying intertwined symphony of the four of us as a collaborative set it back and forth like let's like all tie in our talents and even if we have to record each one individually and then overlay it in music we gonna do it. it it'll work on zoom because i'm gonna stream it kind of like how i did with the freestyle one earlier with daniel where he recorded all his written pieces and then i just freestyled to each one you know. so we're, we can do this um cp got a studio in his house so all we gotta do is record our parts time it out right you know here we'll practice it on zoom get it close enough record our parts out and then send it to cp he'll throw it up overlay if not i could do it myself too i got some uh, musical equipment here and we're gonna have a okay. wonderful poem yeah. so Definitely talk to me about that because I can take my end to to a sound engineer that I know and a theater production troupe that I work with, and we can That's just go right. down you the know, Yeah, you got connections. Remember, Actually, we might just send out the audio if I see you. That's right. You got, yeah, you got, you got connects too. Yeah, definitely. Oh, this is going to be dope, man. I'm excited just to hear it, man. Like, even if I'm, I'm a part of it, but like, I mean, I want to hear it. Y'all. Like, this, this is going to be dope. Um, speaking of dope. One of the dopest poets I know is going to be closing out the show. How cool is that? Love Infinite. I love you infinitely. Thank you for coming back. Um, you're going to be closing out the show. That You know, you, it was been such a one or not, not closing out the show. You're going to be closing out the open mic because we're going to get an encore from Nick after you. I told you that. That's how I meant to word it. But you're closing out the open mic, and then we get the encore from Nick. So uh, thank you for coming back. If you could bless us with some words, we would appreciate it. Yes, thank you so much for the space, um, Thomas. Um, first, a Lantern Carrier sent me here with a poem to read for him. He's in a... Um, we were wondering where he was earlier. We were all worried. Um, can you fill us in on that? Because he hasn't missed a show in almost a year. And so we were like, what's going on? I hope he's okay. Yes, he's in a spiritual retreat with his gurus, with his troop, you know, in New York. So I'm going to read this poem that he sent for me to read. It is called Soaring in the Vastness of Infinity by the Lantern Caria Menatita. Love dances in the sweet silence of my heart, speaking softly in my visionary dreams. She whispers of a sublime rhapsody, unfurling like lotus petals in the profundity of my core. I need you and you alone, my beloved. Who else can create the magical symphonies that envelops my soul in ecstasy? Like a babe on mother's lap, I know not who I am, nor where I'm going. Only the matchless winemaker who has touched my soul with a heavenly kiss so sublime it makes me inebriated and mute. Now I feel the rhythmical resonance of your inner sitar inside my nameless heart. I become an astonishing moonbeam of supernal beauty, a charmed soul bird soaring in the vastness of infinity. Menatita, the lantern carrier, 16th of August, 2023. That was absolutely amazing and beautiful. And we all miss Lantern. He's usually the first one here um, every week. Hasn't missed a show. That's my spiritual uh, guide right there. That's my my big brother, my uncle, my father, my grandfather, my son, my brother, you know, everything, right? And and we were all worried. Yeah, he's on a spiritual retreat, Kate. Oh, he's doing great right now. He's he's more than okay. He's yeah, I'm sure he's thriving. <laughs> yeah, he's he's in his element. And yo, know, that piece that he gave you to read was just absolutely beautiful. And I think he wrote that for you to read here, because that was just that was just amazing, and beautiful. And uh, yeah, I do have some poems of my own. Yeah, I want to hear some of yours too. You know, you got to read for Lantern, but now we we get to hear the great love infinite. So yeah, bless us with some more words. So I have um three on the 
of them. Um, this first one is called uh, Miss Love. I started a job on Thursday. And um, this is just uh, some thoughts <laughs> on my experiences there. Miss Love. Why are you bald headed? I don't like bald headed people. So what? What if I never liked you? What if I'll still like you? Despite the hatefulness in your heart. What if my love is really infinite? This next piece is called I Wholeheartedly. Yeah, that was dope. That was dope. <laughs> My wife too she was like, "Yeah, I should have done that." <laughs> that was great. I, I wish I worked where somebody would say that in the in the workplace. That is great, right? No, I literally told the little girl. She's you know like five. I said, uh, "Well, I like my hair, and what if I don't like your hair? What if I said that?" <laughs> right? Yeah. I was like, "Would that hurt your feelings?" So uh, we had a we had a talk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you you enlighten that little girl. She's gonna walk around with less judgment in her heart and more oh, love. She literally said, Oh, I didn't think about that. Oh, I like, I'm sorry, I like it. <laughs> oh, and now she's gonna go home. She's gonna think about that. Next time she sees someone for being different, they're gonna see the uniqueness and the beauty in it. And I feel like you 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 changed the soul today, and I bless you for that. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah that she's she's thing. gonna turn up with her head shaved, and her mother's gonna go. Yeah, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> it was just funny because it was some you know some some boys in the the midst, and they had no hair too. So I was like, um, we're all like, like, about, yeah, like. <laughs> Would it looks good on them and I mean like I, yeah, I was like, like um, I'm pretty sure I got a prettier face than them, so you know. <laughs> no, I mean just every, all of us are beautiful hair or not, we don't need hair to be beautiful. Yeah. Some of us just don't like that. I had hair, you know. I just wasn't it's a lot. It was a lot. <laughs> Yo, I just realized that the other day because I'm in Canada now, so I've been growing my hair out. But that's my mom. I used to always, I'd be in every, once a week in the backyard with a with clipper shaving my own head, you know, and I got real good at it and everything because I lived in Florida. It was hot. Now I'm up here in like, you know, 38 below. You know, I'm like, I need hair, anything to help insulate my head with. The other day, though, I was washing it. I'm like, this is why I used to shave it. It's a lot of work. And I felt for everyone with long hair in that moment was like, this is a job to me. Like it's, it's a, a job. It's a job. Like I now want to shave it off, but I know winter's coming and I can't grow this back out in a month. You know? <laughs> yeah, but the problem with beer, shaving like, your head is you got to do it every day. You know. Well, so, oh, if you go straight, well, no, I would do it short. I would, I would grab a number two and I shave it. and I do it every Sunday. There you go. It would stay nice and short and insulate. No heat would build them, you know. But now I'm like, I need every little bit of insulation I can get because it's cold. Um, yeah, I'm letting my hair grow good out time. now, but I used to be bald, bald. Like, I used yeah. to say that shit every Like, dicked it? I, like, I, one day when I was shaving my hair off from where it grew back, I cut that shit in the Avatar arrow. I just ah. was playing around. <laughs> literally the avatar era i was just playing around because i was just like yeah you know after why not have fun with play, it right like if you said like, so long it was like i really love this short hair shit like yeah going into a barbershop i was like i like this shit i really do i don't really like i like it looks great hair. on you and it's such easy maintenance like i miss having yeah. short hair you can just it just wash makes hair, me think don't have to worry about the long dry all that yeah. i saw these two girls last week who had their head shaved except for a triangle right on top and they must have got it done at some salon because they had it done in the perfect texture of pubic hair <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, like <laughs> yes okay i'm sorry oh, yeah, can, love can you please uh sh sh bless us with some more words before this conversation goes way off <laughs> yeah, yeah, you talking about short hair for a minute um okay so this next poem is called uh i wholeheartedly disagree it's my second poem it's also about the teaching you're not the teacher 
one of my new students at my possible new job that I'm really still just trialing says to me, they told me, just come in Thursday and Friday. See how you like it. Child care isn't for everyone. No shit. Come back Monday if you like it. No pressure. Bailey is a nine-year-old who decided on Friday she'd like to be my favorite student. Are you coming back? You're not leaving us, are you, Miss Love? You've only been here 48 hours. Technically, I was only there 10, 10 hours when she decided to tell her mom when she arrived to pick her up to come back later. Her excuse, movie night. The truth, she helped me with whatever she could, volunteered for everything until my supervisor told her to go sit down with the other kids. You're not the teacher, echoes in my ears, beats on my heart, slides on my head like a cha-cha and a right foot stomp. Tell God that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, we are all teachers, especially when it comes to the future. It takes a village, right? And yeah. I appreciate you, you know. Oh, that was sweet. You see? Especially after that story where you know you you just saw how you said it, and then you got a whole poem about like it's, yeah. I love kindred what you're doing souls. Right that girl's just tying into your own energy. Yeah, it was so funny. She came up to me and said, "Well, um, I know you're only are you? I, I know you're doing this for two days. Are you gonna leave?" Um, and I was like, "How you know that I'm doing this for two days?" And she was like, I'm "Psychic." And I was like, oh, well, me too. But um, I wasn't thinking about that. And she was like, well, yesterday you were. And I was like, oh, well, I Damn. was. And um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. because Hey, I believe in, in tele, uh, telepathy and, and, yeah. and all that, man. Like, there, there's things. I've, I've spoke telepathically with both the people in this room, actually, with me. With my wife and my best friend here. We both. And so I believe that. You know what I mean? Like. Because if you think about it, we all tune into the same consciousness. And so why can't we pass messages through that same, you know? We same definitely record. can. I was talking to somebody about that in a different open mic. I was like, we could go so much further if everybody opened up their telepathy. But or well, that's even why I got open <laughs> minds going. I'm here to try to open up as many minds as I can, you know? <laughs> yeah, then we'd be able to get rid of Zoom. Who would? Yeah, 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 right? We could just, yo, we could all just teleport to some place and just be there in, like, our astral bodies, like, circled around on top of a mountain, some arena poetry. How dope would that be? At that point, you don't have to be in your room. You could be anywhere. We'd be like, do y'all want to go to Italy today? Okay, yeah. Italy, open mic yeah one one day we'll we'll be there got this got you know this. okay <laughs> this last poem is called homeless displaced refugee wanderer exile who needs a home i became homeless may 31st Received one too many threats from a family member who took me in. Guess my time was up. I moved in after breaking up with Zuri. His name means luck. He took me in too. I'm so lucky. I'm so blessed, I guess. After being raped, after being drugged, I became homeless. July 20 something, 2020. I used to remember the exact day, but this year I can't recall. I'm still dying inside though, still living outside though. Who needs a home? Who needs a home? When you have a heart, even if it's broken, like a car missing a tail light, a bumper, a window. I'm still working. I'm still moving. Nothing's taking me off this path, off this road. Nothing. Before that, 
I made money to send home. So much money, I'll never get back. So much sacrifice, I'll never get back. I can write about it though. I can cry about it though. I still cry about it though. I remember beatings before school, dry the tears, wipe away the snot, sniff it back in. Don't let them see you hurting. Don't let them view your pain. Don't put your abuse on display. I promise you don't deserve to know me anyways. Family of abusers, sell her to the government, to the neighborhood. Get a pretty penny for the pussy, for the poetry, for the plays, for the art. It's so spiritual. She's so special. It's so divine. She's so kind. Let them ostracize her. Throw her to the wolves. She's just love, all love. She won't mind. True. I've always started my grudges good before I let them go. It's not good for the pussy. Changes the pH. Ruins the taste. They want pure love. Not that bittersweet. Not that righteous anger. They want pure love. That's all they ever want. Love infinite, infinite love. Well, love is infinite pain. I don't wanna fool you. I was born homeless, born streetwalker, born sex worker, worked since the Goo Goos. They loved my lady Gaga's. Who needs a home? Who needs a home? When you got a heart that loves infinitely, breaks infinitely, who needs a home? Who needs a home, I guess? Thank you. Thank you. Talking about like, you know, be, getting in, we was all getting in our feelings and getting real personal with it and stuff. And, and you just fit the thing with that last one. Like, thank you for being so vulnerable. In, in such a safe place with all these cool ass people that are gonna unmute themselves and give infinite love to love infinite. Yeah, bless you. Bless hey, you Lord. for putting that up. Thank, Thank you. you. Courage, that's courage. That's courage right there. That's what you fucking call courage. Thank you, CP. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, you would know, CP. <laughs> The king of curry. Y'all really know what CP stands for, right? It's not Charles Perry. It's courage, protection. He got that courage to protect the ones he loves, and he always will. And we going to get on this uh, four-way uh, thing pretty soon, man. This collab is going to be dope. Um, Yeah, I think that's all we had on the roster. And then we're going to hear a wonderful... She's here. Oh, Teresa's back again. Now. Oh, Terry Rose. Terry, if you could open up the mic for Love Infinite. Woo! Oh, yeah. Oh, that was awesome. Love. Woo I, yeah. And a great rendition of uh, Lantern's work. And also, great hearing your work. I don't think we've met. Nice to meet you. Uh, we hey, have. Love but Infinite. it was love a, Infinite. A, a, a poetic, but. It was a long time ago, but yes, thank oh, you. Oh, it was, yes. It has been, I haven't been to the, been there in a minute. I actually did meet uh, Dr. Faze on the um, at NYC Poetry Fest last year. I met him and uh, Keep Back Steve. I met both of them. They were both really cool. <laughs> dope, dope, man. I, I, I'm going to meet y'all all in person soon because we're going to go on like a, a tour and go see and take take the show on the road, as they say. And uh, we're, yeah, we're gonna hit up down the West Coast all the way across. We're gonna hit Houston for sure, and uh, a bunch of other places all around, you know. And uh, and get to see everybody in person and and do the show from from you know day house for the night, right? Like, but yeah, um, Terry, can you bless us with 
with some words, and then Nick's going to give us an encore. I might even do a good, the quick good night poem. I haven't done it in a while. I don't know how y'all even heard it. So, yeah, let uh, Terry, if you can unmute yourself and bless us with some words, we'd appreciate it. Hmm. Um, I'm looking for this one piece, but I'm not sure which. I of course I'm unorganized with my where I keep stuff. Hang on a second. I'll get most one. of us are. You know. Yeah, I got a bunch of notebooks, and there's just no rhyme or reason to how it's. Oh, in there. But, <laughs> hey, but they're there, though, right? One, I'm trying to find the one that he wrote about the um, prompt from I don't think it's in here. Oh, Terry, do you know on September 21st, I'm doing oh, I found it. Word Go game. ahead. Say that again, what? I said on uh, September 21st, I'm doing a, a word games with vocabulary. So you gotta be there. Oh, cool. I'm gonna send you the invite and stuff. So. Okay. Yes. She usually sends me everything that she's doing, so I, I'll probably okay. get it from her if I don't get it from you. All right. So <laughs> here we go. Um, this is inspired by um, a prompt that Gustav gave us in New York City when we were sitting in. Uh, um, is it my internet or is she just turned into a robot? It's not uh, just your internet. Definitely. I okay. Think Terry, turn your video <laughs> I think, off. Or we were on our way to Katz's Deli and we were talking about. Or we, we, uh, is, can you hear Wait. me? Yeah, you were lagging out real bad with your video on, so hopefully we can hear you now. Go ahead and uh, tell us a story. But uh, Megas, y'all was on the way to Katz's Deli. And... Yeah. Well, can you hear me? Okay. So he was telling a story about one of the last times he was in Philadelphia, how he was walking um, and he looked on the ground and saw all these uh, hypodermic needles laying there. So um, uh, he said there was a lot of them, but I, I turned this poem. We were all going to challenge each other to write a piece about that. So I wrote a thousand needles laying on the ground, a thousand pricks who sold the stuff to our kids, a thousand knives slicing open the veins and bleeding out this poem. This poem is a mother's anguish and pain. We were not supposed to outlive our children. A thousand pills laying on the floor spilled out of unfamiliar names printed on bottles, face down, barely breathing, framing his face, the face that used to fit in my cupped hands, the face that used to look back at me adoringly. I was his world back then. I failed him. Society failed him. He was sold a dream that never manifested. The world made no room for his hope and promise. So he gave up from trying. He settled for less while inside he died, just going through his daily ritual, knowing that he was meant for so much more. That was dope. I really appreciated that piece, that was good. Once again, Terry, I love you. Everybody, unmute yourselves and give it up for Terry Rose. Woohoo, Terry! Your piece is excellent. Thank you. Well, you inspired it. <laughs> Cheers. Love it. You, you, and some other people. I can't say it was all you, but you definitely were the prompt. Yeah. All right. So, what a wonderful night. Uh, the energy came from such a wonderful soul, Nick Paleologos. Um. I, I remember seeing you at several different places. I always try to get you here on Friday nights. I know you're a busy man, but I really appreciate you coming and doing this feature. And I hope you had a wonderful time. Um, I hope you come back more, you know, for over mics and stuff. Whenever you get the chance on a Friday night, you ain't doing that. You know, come through and, and see us here because you got nothing but love from everybody here. Before this man does an encore,
Can we just give it up for that feature? He did that shit was dope. And he saved a nice yeah. encore chunk for us. Give it up. Ooh, 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 love you now. Love it. More. Encore. 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 One um, of one. us. <laughs> one of us. Do another Jersey poem. As a former oh, resident, I connect with those. I definitely have to dig for a Jersey poem. I only think I maybe have four of them. I have one about the sh the one I did earlier was about the shore. I have one about that. I'm working on one for your Pulaski one. I've started it. I'm not done with it yet, unfortunately. <laughs> but like, it's going to be interesting how I'm going to do the Pulaski because I've been there a few times in my life. But I'm trying. I'll find a a poem from that. But actually. I actually have an idea for the opener for the encore. I'm going to do something that I don't think I've ever done for a, a feature. And that's I'm going to cover a poem. I rarely ever do this. And Paul, it's William Carlos Williams that I'm covering. Wow. One of the, the most well-known poets like in Jersey. Yeah, let it roll. So this is actually one of my favorites from William. This is called Spring and All. By the Road to the Contagious Hospital by William Carlos Williams. I, by the road to the contagious hospital, under the surge of the blue mottled clouds driven from the northeast a cold wind, beyond the waste of broad muddy fields brown with dried weeds, standing and fallen patches of standing water the scattering of tall trees all along the road the reddish purplish forked upstanding twiggy stuff of bushes and small trees with dead brown leaves under them leafless vines lifeless in appearance sluggish Days spring approaches. They enter the new world, naked, cold, uncertain of all save that they enter. All about them the cold, familiar wind. Now the grass. Tomorrow the stiff curl of wild ca carrot leaf. One by one, objects are defined. It quickens, clarity, outline of leaf. But now, the stark dignity of entrance. Still, the profound change has come upon them, rooted. They grip down, and they be and begin to awaken. Wow. And uh, well, I've never heard of that poet before, but. Thank you for introducing me to that. that was, and you, de the delivery on it, like, that was dope, man. I appreciate that piece. I love hearing new poetry from people. You know. Yeah, you should definitely go check him out. Um, I'll drop the name in for you in the chat after I'm done with it and everything so you can browse all of his stuff. And yes, I agree also with CP2. There's so much more than the red wheelbarrow. Everyone always goes yeah, to the poem. I yeah, I was just going to say that, Thomas, watch out, because the poems you'll find cited around are definitely not his best poems. Well, you know how the masses work, right? Like they, you know, you got to be poppy. They like what it, they like. But the good stuff, only us entrepreneurs, get, or, uh, not on uh, that other word. I'm stoned right now. I'm sorry. I'm going to let you keep going with this uh, encore, Nick. Thank you for introducing me to William Carlos Williams. And I'm going to look up his stuff. And I'll be able to weed out the bad stuff, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, definitely look him up and everything, too, as well. So that was something a little different from uh, from me and everything. Um, the, the next one that I'll do, I actually was funny because everyone's doing the one of us chance and it like, I'm so glad everyone still does it. Like, it's really awesome. Like when you, when y'all do it and everything, I'm glad, um, you know, so I'm really happy about that and everything. And I, and I was digging in for a poem and I couldn't find it, but I found this one and I haven't done this one in such a long time. This doesn't even have a title. So let's just 
roll with it. Maybe I'll name it afterwards. These visions are acoustic horror melodies played to the tune of tinnitus. A constant, never ends, of the thread sewn is the quilt, blanketed a body in spite of escape. Hope is the worst. It'll tell you to daydream of times when the body was alive. It'll tell you you can escape whenever you want. Here's the key. Unlock the door. See what's on the other side. It's more of the same. Same hell, same channel, same tune. Drugs will make you see euphoria. Selfish of them. They didn't tell you where in the universe you are. They'll stimulate, they'll simulate every outcome, every time you are the knife, every time you are held against the knife, every, even a crack of sunshine is a way out of the cavern of the mind. He takes it. He never takes it. Maybe one day he will. Don't count on it, though. He'll never escape his own delusions. If he doesn't move his body. Yo. I said new piece that's untitled there. Um, I, I wrote this one a, like months ago. This one was probably. And like you still can't put that title on it. Huh? That shit is deep, bro. I love that last line, how you ended it. And it inspires me of a title. Um, Great encore. Oh, he's got more for us. He's got another piece. I'll give you. How about this? I'll give you two more because I did a cover. So I'll give you two more, and I think. Yeah. Nick, could pick up the mic, bro. I, I'm having a very hard time hearing uh, you. Is over this better? Here. Is, much is better. better. Yeah. You much go. better. Yeah. All right. So let's do this. I'm gonna do two more for y'all. For y'all. I figured we go right to the book and do just two last ones from the book. We'll call it a day. How's that sound? I was going to do my Gengar one, but I've done that one too many times, and I haven't done this one in God knows how long. And this is probably my most well-known one, I think. It's called I'm Taking You to Church. Welcome to the Church of Poeminality. We accepted everyone here, unless... You are an oppressor or you have any of these diseases. It is not limited to xenophobia, racism, sexism, homophobia, biphobia, transphobia, misogyny, and any other hatred of our human race. We have services available to rehab those behaviors. If you or any members are inflicting any harm, you will be booted out faster than Des Bryant throwing up the X after a touchdown. The matrimony is prose and poetry. We anoint the sick with the oils of our ink. We are baptized and confirmed in words. Our ordained ministers are the hosts. We don't do communion here. Community is enough. Our columns have poetry all over them. Our scriptures are poetry slams. Our hymns are free verses. Our windows are stained glass of poets of the past and present. Our scaffolding states, you are worth it no confessions here our work is all we need the debts to be paid is to yourself you owe yourself love and to properly tell your story if you cannot pay we will work with you anyone can attend the church of poeminality just be brave be vulnerable don't be hateful most of all be yourself we look forward to having you here and if you are new here then we say i'm taking you to church. The church isn't a building, though. It's every open mic you've ever been to. You, you're you taking us to church. Hey, Nick, Woo! create an online church for poetry. I'm with you. Everyone's with you. Thank you so much for doing this feature. I Bless appreciate us with some that, of those right? words, brother. I appreciate you all as well. And this has been an amazing night and everything. We're approaching 11 o'clock over here <laughs> on the East Coast. So it's getting a little bit late for me. And uh, we're, our, my back is basically up against the wall right over here. So I'll give you all 
one last one, but I'm going to let y'all decide which one it is from the book. Ooh, do we get to pick a page? And a page? I'm down to two poems. These these are the two oh, poems okay. that I, I'm, I'm narrowed down to. All right. It's called When Comets... The first one is When Comets Cry. Ooh. And the second one is Remember Me When I Transcend. Oh, now, Remember me, me When I Transcend, bro. Remember or you me. could do a book. Yeah, or if you could do When Comets Cry, and re- if you could squeeze them real quick into both, like, I know it's late, but you know, it's a Friday. You know you what? Could... You know, like, both? Like, like, come on. I, I'm, hey, I'm a little greedy, right? Like, I want to... You know, I want to hear more. I, lo- I love Nick. I want to hear more. I love y'all too. So why don't we do this? They're both pretty short. So we'll do, if Thomas wants to hear both and y'all want to hear both, I'll do that. Those two will be my closers right there. When comets we cry, are not... run com- when comets cry, and then remember me when I transcend. Here's the first one. When I peer into your eyes, why does your galaxies cry? Instead of seeing stars and meteors fly by, they leak out your eyes. I will wipe them away as we clutch together, turning sadness into supernova. I am sure your trials have been deeper than black holes could understand. Your shoulders, colder than Neptune. Your pain as gigantic as Jupiter. Your rage, vast as Mars. Are you feeling excluded like Pluto? Well, you are a planet amongst the system. Show yourself some love like Venus. Invest within as Mercury does. It's okay if you spin differently like Uranus. You clutch so tightly to yourself. You hold plenty of pain from these years. Release yourself. Take time to heal. Ground yourself to the earth. Take a breath in. And out open your eyes and repeat after me it's going to be okay oh my god i love that one it's one of my more peaceful poems like it's like a very like cathartic release right there you know yeah it is it's like a mini meditation almost like I felt like I just meditated for a half hour just hearing that. And like yeah, wonderful it. images. Yeah. Thank you so much for that, Nick. And I'm excited to hear your last piece too. And I also want to say happy one year anniversary, Open Minds. Congratulations. Keep it going right there. Thank you all for coming out tonight. I really tonight, today, wherever you are in the world, or whether you're listening to this, whatnot. I, I appreciate each and every one of you. This is my last one for tonight. And this one really holds a special place in my heart. This one is called Remember Me When I Transcend. When I die, I want you to know it is not your fault. It would be my own hands that dig my grave and bury me seven feet under. I won't be taking my riches with me. My soul won't stay stagnant. My poetry will overflow out of these pages. At least I hope. I am the holder of my own keys to my own gas-fueled fuckery. With my pedal to the floor of my vehicle, I speed race to fast and furious that one day will kill me. I want a true principle that school never taught me. I need a belief that doesn't kill others. I would love to hold someone close to me. I have accepted that I will eventually go out as either a martyr or devil. It's going to be how I am perceived when the sun touches the earth on that fateful day. I hope I am recognized as a poet. Absolutely beautiful. What a wonderful close to your set and encore. Nick, thank you so much. Everybody, unmute yourself and give it up for the man of the night. Great feature, Nick.
Yeah. That was awesome. We got Absolutely. you covered. We recognize you. Yeah, we love you, brother. We do. And man. no way out of that. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way out. Of One that. of us. One of us. <laughs> One of us. Uh, I'm uh, <laughs> no, mermaid, mermaid. <laughs> yeah, it's great to hear so much of you because, um, you know, I'm one of those people who rem and when I first uh, encountered you, you know, it was the very early on in the first uh, few weeks or months of the New Eureka Monday night. Mm. And, uh, you know, those were pretty fraught times. Uh, and, uh, you know, you, you, you definitely uh, are just blazing your own trail. Yeah. That's why I was so excited to get Nick. I asked Nick a while ago. We planned this months ago because we had, you know, the whole thing booked up. And I was like, man, I fucking love you. We've done some writing workshops together. We've seen in other open mics. He's been here to open minds. And, and me and Nick just like kind of buddied up. And I'm like, bro, you need to come do a feature for me. I would love it. And you did not disappoint, man. Like tonight you were so on point, so on fire. You had all these new pieces. Like it was amazing and beautiful. And and I'll tell you from the bottom of my heart, from the openness of my mind, thank you so much for doing this feature, brother. Thank you. And thank you for having me. And and thank you to everyone who has who's been here and stuck around to is even stuck around to as well. Like I appreciate each and every one of you. Like this has been an awesome night. I got to hear some new people too, as well. There's some people that I haven't heard from in like quite a while and everything too. And it's a 9 PM here. I think we've been doing this for four hours now. Uh, I think. It, yeah. It, yeah. That's, that's, it's yeah, that's right. And we still have 15 people in here. That's, that's amazing. Having a good, good time with poetry that's why i think uh debbie uh commented on it earlier she goes thomas i really like uh your open mic policy because <laughs> how i told uh dre when he's, he's like what do i got i'm like we all want to hear you <laughs> you know like dude like y'all know how they, and, and people like i had to switch up the roster all night to make sure everyone was heard because you gotta leave and like you know like we do this it's friday night if you ain't got nothing to do on a friday night you sit at home and you want to do some poetry come hang out Right. That's why I like to put like time limits and things and, you know, a strict regimen like oh, this poetry. If you put if you if you put in poetry in like some sort of like military schedule way like then what do you do? You can't cage creativity. I can't put CP in a cage. You know what I'm saying? Like, how you know, what I mean, like, how would I even do that? Where do you even start? Where do you grab him from? <laughs> But yeah, everybody uh, that was here um, that has to leave, good night. I love you all. But CP's going to spit something for us. So I'm going to unleash him from this cage. And he has something he want to share before the night's out. So if y'all want to stick around for a little more, you go going to hear some CP. And then I'm going to read just a, a, it's like eight bars, just a little quick good night to y'all. So thank you everyone for sticking around this long. Uh, CP, I'm yourself and bless us with some words, brother. So uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, fly back out Friday morning. I'm going to be in New York. Um, I'm a part of this advocacy think tank, right? A whole bunch of people from all over the states. Um, our last meeting was in St. Louis. This meeting just so happened to be in New York City. So I wrote a poem like over, like to encompass everything we've been going through in this think tank. And uh I got about two more days to get it memorized. And it's like a three page prose poem. So I just want to get used to it. It's called Imagine Sarah. By the way, I've heard this and it is dope. And he needs to practice this. And yeah, for everyone that heard this, oh, I'm so ready to hear it again. CP, you're going to crush it. Read it dope now, like you standing in front of the whole crowd. And then call me after the show or sometime tomorrow before, you, and I want to hear it again before you do it. Like I, I'm gonna sit there and poke and prod you until you get this shit you're right, because it, it's such a, a wonderful piece, man. And and I thank you for reading it for everybody here tonight. Appreciate that, man. Um, yeah. Imagine Sarah. Somewhere, in anywhere hometown USA, 
there's a wave of undocumented Maria's. Second generation, barely making ends meet Martha's and Marisol's and compression socks and second season. Shit, hold on. I think I hear something. Uh, sorry, false alarm. Okay, I was, okay, I was about to say, I've heard this poem and I don't think that's part of it. <laughs> okay, somewhere in anywhere hometown USA, there's a wave of undocumented Marias, second generation, barely making ends meet Martha's and Marisol's and compression socks in second season of separated and divorced, single parent problems for Shamika's, Teresa's, Marilyn's and Keisha's, a few moments. A few moments past midnight, making mid-shift moves as new managers, Martha and Marisol are tempted to hire maids, princesses of the push brooms, whose mops have swagger, and they're raining down spray bottle bleach mist upon every desk in every cubicle plantation on every floor of this minimum wage castle of a call center. Did you know every barely able to make ends meet mother's make up are made up of Merlot and Rosé and after school math tutors and peanut butter and jelly crackers. And also inside every other mother's makeup is Benadryl and Robitussin and last minute late night science fair projects and dollar store glue runs and poster boards and children's Tylenol and fixed vapor rub and scratch your head algebra homework that just ain't getting done tonight because that new math is about as tolerable as a kid turning in a spelling test with cursive handwriting that's not taught anymore. It's John 3, 16 in the morning and Martha's three children sleep peacefully. And they're shared one bedroom, queen size bed apartment. Timothy, 10. Kimberly, seven. Oh, and then there's Sarah. Sarah's six. Act like she's 16 going on 30. She's nonverbal. She lives on a spectrum, but she makes moves like an outlaw with it, though. Once at her third birthday party, shortly after make a wish, blown out candles and barely able to walk with some washable markers, construction paper, left handed scissors, and glue. And she built her first pair of experimental angel wings. And it's in our inaugural flight. She flew straight through a kickball game across two hopscotch chalk outlines, barely landing on the other side of a water puddle in the middle of the playground, really proud of her show she was. But in real time reality, Sarah was only able to fly for like a few split seconds, but you gotta love her prop plane passion and sheer stubborn six-year-old tenacity to test the design and pride of pure air as she soared across that water puddle, though. Sarah's hand-me-downs are about as torn as her mother Martha's revolving door of bipolar, depression, anxiety attacks, heartbroken, her AD HD decisions must be made on Nana's behalf. Either there's enough money for another month of food for you, Grandma, or there's enough money for all your prescription refills you need for the month. Choose wisely, America, because Nana can't afford both. The funny thing about living on a fixed income is that it's not built or prepared to cover the consistent $78 cost of living raises and apartment lease rent hikes up every year. The funny thing about lower middle class single parent mommy households is that some way, sometimes second jobs can only afford to put chicken on the goddamn table again for another night. It's hard to judge a jury of your peers until you realize that none of those peers look just like you, just like it's hard to judge gerrymandering politicians, poker facing freedom, gambling with gentrification to acquire property rights, to build another high rise or bistro or well manicured golf courses, 18 holes, until you realize 
None of these policymakers live below the poverty line just like you. Has ever had an appointment to certify SNAP food benefits and miss it because cell phones prepaid minutes ran out before you can afford a re-up on some more. Congress doesn't dock your paycheck for having to call out of work for two weeks for Timothy catching chicken pox. Then Kimberly catching chicken pox. Congress has never passed on great pediatricians because minimum wage paycheck deposits doesn't cover top-notch medical care for your autistic needs because the best doctors always seem to be out of your network. Imagine Sarah. Imagine her torn hand-me-downs, thrift store shoes with holes in the soul. Imagine poorly advertised city council meetings that won't make a difference with common man because common sense rarely shows up on time to speak up for itself, let alone systemic change. Imagine Martha or Marisol's third shift job trying to cover rent, and lights and food, car notes, never mind the household trinity of holding their bank accounts hostage with full medical, full dental, full coverage, car insurance, all coming out of the same damn check. We ignore allergies and dietary restrictions and subpar food found freeloading badly in our free school lunches. Ignore elementary kids who have to check in behavioral meds in schools, nurses' offices, because at least twice a day, acting off your meds typically poses problems, but your teacher won't write you a hall pass to get the move stabilizing prescription doses you desperately need because being off your meds by midday will easily mislabel you as a misfit, as a problem student, as yet another disrespectful poor kid with bad manners from the block, speech pathologist getting paid pennies, 30 minutes a day class reading comprehension support, principal conflict resolutions and teacher's assistance interventions detect bitter teachers who no longer do it for the kids, but now only do it for retirement benefits. America, as you're fighting over abortion rights, let me introduce myself. Hello. Hello, my name is Limited Income. My name is Glass Ceiling. My name is Systemic Change. Hello, my name is how cruel of a world we've become to believe that our children are our future, yet somehow bright future formulas for LGBT transgender suicidal kids are going ignored for way, way, way too long. Imagine Sarah no longer simply being on the spectrum but actually Capri Sun sipping, sitting crisscross applesauce on it with more construction paper, more washable markers, same lucky pair of left hand scissors and better glue. She's building a better pair of experimental angel wings and nothing else matters more than this moment. This time, imagine Sarah arms stretched out so wide you swore she was hunting god and how i was today years old when i realized i need not be an advocate for something when it comes to shit being fucked up i need to be an advocate for everything what are we really doing here it's not living oh thanks guys for letting me uh work out some kinks CP, Holy thank you so much for amazing. sharing that with us. You're going to yeah. fucking turn that whole room out, bro. That last line, too. Like, yo, if we yeah. ain't advocating for everything. What are we advocating for? Like, you know what I mean? Like, and, and I know that, yo, you know, you guys think tank, y'all can only handle so much at a time, but like, that's going to like ignite that fire, bro, and get that thing going. So if, if you could, too, if you could post any links to the advocacy so maybe some people here might donate to the cause or, you know what I mean? Like, um let's let's keep this movement going you're gonna get on stage and crush it man i, I want you to p hit it up again i'm gonna I'm hit you up though we gonna i want you to read that to me again because i love that shit dude like imagine sarah everybody unmute yourself and give it up for cp amazing 
that was awesome. Yes. Um, and I that take that amazing. energy CP. and I give it back to you guys. Shout outs uh, to the feature. We got it? it. The New Jersey Jesus. What was the line? Like, what was the, the Oh, I'm, I'm called Jersey Jesus sometimes. Jersey Never. Jesus, yeah. Give it up for Jersey Jesus. Please. Jersey, and, and why? Because you said, what, the long hair and something? Like, you said some slick shit behind it, too. What was what was the whole, why did I call you Jersey Jesus? Let me go ahead and pull that up for you real quickly. So, uh, well, let me see here. So. It was slick, bro. Was <laughs> intro. Yeah, yeah, yeah intro it was slick. I was like, this is really genius. I was like, this, this has got to be intro. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Blah, 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 blah. Take my menaces and... Maybe it's my facial hair or how I let it flow through the air. Ah, oh, love it. Beard in the wind, Nick. As you was spitting that fire, I'm surprised you have facial hair. That shit should have burnt up a long time ago with that fire you spitting, bro. I'm so glad that you did this. Um, we gonna end it. It's been almost four hours and twenty minutes. You know, four is the magic number. I'm gonna read a poem. I I know a few of y'all might have heard this. A few of y'all might have not. I remember it was um, I was inspired by Advocate of Words to write the Good Night poem, and a few other people were too. And I've heard it at several other places. So I decided to write a good Good Night Open Minds poem. Um, it's very short, simple, sweet. I know we all got shit to do. You know, so. Um, I'd like to end this night just by saying thank you, beautiful soul, for sharing your heart. Thank you for being here and caring for art. Thank you for unfolding the wholeness, for being a part, for participating in our mission to spread the light to the night for your stimulating transmission and widespread sight. Thank you for visiting Open Minds, Open Mic. I love all y'all. We Woo! hope it's Friday for Finn Bell's feature. Yeah. Stay inspired. Oh, good out. night, Tom. Well, that was beautiful. Oh, my mama's still here. Good night, mama. I love you. I love you. Good night, everybody. Jess, love Jess, mom loves ya. Love you too, mama. She said. All right. Good night, everybody. What a wonderful show. And um, yeah. I'll see you next Friday. Good night. Everybody, thanks for coming. Good night. Out.